Live from Texas Motor Speedway, Fox Sports presents Sprint Cup Racing. It's a Fox NASCAR Monday, our eighth race of 36 points races. And yes, after a rain out on Sunday, temperature in the mid 50s, cloudy, cool, but no rain in the pictures so far. Tony Stewart, two time champ. His first pole in more than four years is ready to roll. Casey Kane starts fifth. It's been an adventurous week for him and Richard Petty Motorsports as he's headed for Hendrick in 2011. And Jeff Gordon, the defending champ of this race. Let's head trackside. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as the 3rd Battalion Command Training Group, 75th Battle Command Training Division out of Fort Sill, Oklahoma, present our nation's colors. Please remain standing as Dr. Marsh of Texas Alliance Raceway Ministries offers today's invocation. Heavenly Father, as we gather here today at the Great American Speedway to prepare for some exciting racing, we thank you for this window of opportunity that you've given to us. We thank you also for the freedoms that we enjoy in this country. We ask you to watch over all who fight to defend those freedoms. And Father, today as we prepare to enjoy the excitement of NASCAR Sprint Cup Series racing, we pray for safety on the part of everyone involved. In Jesus' name I pray it, amen. And here to perform our national anthem, please welcome the legendary Charlie Pride. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er oh, the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Let's hear it for Charlie Pride for his performance of our national anthem. Pride and, and the proud, and we're ready to go. 501 miles or more. We'll explain and look at the start of the race what you could expect from guys like Carl Edwards in the field. We're glad you're with us for NASCAR on Fox. All the rules go out the window. Right. What do you do? Checker. Get up on the wheel and, and make something happen. That's what's making these races so crazy at the end. So we're into overdrive. Green, white, checker. Be green, white, checker. There'll be a slugfest. Is it going to be one green, white, checker? Is it going to be two? Is it going to be three? Here comes oh, Hamlin. Spell a victory. The oh, next baby. flag ends it. Bill Murray. Three <laughs> wide into the corner behind them. Denny Hamlin. <laughs> what a call. You are the man. Two by two. Two laps to go. Who's going to win it? Checkered flag in the air. Hello, Newman. Newman. Yes, sir, baby. So if it's exciting to the fans, then I can't see how it's best. The end of the races this year, crazy, unpredictable, and maybe the start of some races like today. We're glad you're with us, tuning in on a Monday, along with uh, Jeff Hammond, our entire gang, Chris Myers, we're all here to cover the race, and in his cowboy motif. By the way, Ross Perot wants his bowler back. Oh, uh, well, whatever. he, he might as well get it back. i tell you what, Chris. Today, Daryl said to bring your work clothes. Well, <laughs> folks, we're ready to go to work. All right, well, we talk about the end of races, and we'll get to that, and we'll see that. What about the start of uh, this race? Remember the, the distance? And we've had speeds up to 200, maybe over 200 miles per hour. Here. Yeah, I think the thing is right now, you got Tony Stewart and Sam Hornship on the front row. When they drop the green flag, nobody knows exactly what's going to happen because they've not had any practice, and you've already touched on it, over 200 miles an hour. You don't know what's going to happen, I can guarantee you. All right, and the spoiler, third race, uh, first for a mile and a half, and it'll figure in who finishes on top and affecting the points. Jimmy Johnson, our points leader. You check out that top 12. Four of the five winners this year, Jeff, 
are not in the top 12 currently. No, they're on the outside, and today they need to make a move, and that spoiler could come into play because, you know, Carl Edwards said, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what it's going to be like to see 43 cars diving off into turn one at the drop of the green flag. You never know what's going to happen. All right, and that unpredictability, we've had four different winners in the last four races, so it's not dominating Jimmy John. He's not dominating even though he's the points leader. It's either all Jimmy or the rest of the field. And it's been kind of like a balance there. Four to three. Be interested to see how it's going to play out today. Jimmy's going to have his work cut out. All right. Four of the seven races so far this year have gone the extra mile. Will today. Let's go down and get those engines uh, cranked up. Race fans, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome your Grand Marshal, Samsung Mobile Recycle Program winner, Tammy King. Hey, Tony Stewart. Oh, yeah, and gentlemen, start your engines. Uh, the unpredictability at the end of the race. It just got started. You don't know when you get the command what kind of uh, predictability there, <laughs> there is. Uh, we're glad you're with us for what could be. Actually, there are drivers, 15 drivers, uh, that are going to run the nationwide after this race. So they'll be going 801 miles in eight hours if they can hang in there. I know our guys will. That's Darryl right. Waltrip, Larry McReynolds, and Mike Joy. Mike, you ready to go? Let's have at it, Chris, and uh, thanks to the Hardy fans that braved the elements yesterday and came back for this race today. The place will look about half full, but they're going to see a good race. Daryl, I'm not so concerned about the green-white checker the last two laps. I'm concerned about these first two laps. You've got to race hard into turn one. You've got to run as hard as you can because you're racing. But it's all the great unknown. You don't know what to expect. Yeah, you, you know, in every race, no matter uh, what goes on, there's always that anticipation. Uh, you always worry about that first lap. Even if you've had practice yesterday, these guys haven't been in these race cars since Friday. Got a lot of unknowns, a new tire, a track with no rubber. And Larry, you got the spoiler. We got a lot of things to deal with here. Uh, a lot of anxiety when this race starts. Now, Larry, Dale Jr. worked only on qualifying runs in practice. Juan Montoya worked only on race runs in practice. Could you be concerned either way? You know, honestly, I'm concerned both ways because <laughs> it's like Daryl said, it's been so long since these cars have been on that racetrack. This racetrack is totally different from what we had on Friday. A, it's much cooler. It's a completely green racetrack with no rubber down on it. And I think this is where the drivers, the crew chiefs, and the spotters, everybody involved they're going to have to be very patient the first 100 laps or so until this racetrack gets back into the mode that it was when it had some rubber down on it and i know our last few races we've talked about late race cautions when you think about the race at texas normally it ends up with who can stretch the fuel the longest at the end that's the way a lot of the races have been won here now nascar will throw a competition yellow at lap 25. let's hope we get at least that far without incident let's go downstairs for late breaking stories along pit road first to matt yokum mike Kyle bush racing for redemption this afternoon and also has a huge agenda here at the texas motor speedway now he's got a lot of success in the nationwide series winning four straight he'll go for five later today but more importantly he's trying to get to victory lane with his home state sponsor interstate batteries he says this first 25 laps before the competition caution will just ride along experiment see what the racetrack gives back as far as feedback and what his car will do but he's pretty confident about what his package will be here on this intermediate racetrack to Steve Burns. And Matt, Jimmy Johnson made three long race runs Friday in practice, so they feel pretty good about their setup as well. Chad Canals kind of chuckled when asked about, hey, are you experimenting at tracks early this season that will be in the chase? He said, I don't care if we dominate this race here. We're going to run something different when we come back here in the fall. Let's go to Chris Devota. Well, Juan Pablo Montoya used the extra day to fill up on movies. His crew chief, Brian Patty, said he just slept and said he needs the extra energy to keep up with his driver. Now, Juan Pablo Montoya was happy the practice got washed out on Saturday because they had their car exactly where they wanted it, and he's hoping the others today do not. Dick. Matt Kenseth off to a great start in the 2010 season. He is second in points due in no small part to the fact that he has finished in the top 10 in every race but one. Today, he starts deep in the field, 28th. But Kenseth fans, don't let that bother you. In 2002, after qualifying, he lost an engine. The engine change meant that he had to start dead last. And Kenseth passed every car here in Texas to win. He could do it again today. 
Thanks, folks. We're ready to race after two straight days of rain here in Texas. You see a little dampness still on pit road. The jet dryers have been out since early this morning as you have a look through our starting lineup for today's race. This morning, no rain, but it was very, very humid, and it took a long, long time to get this racing surface dry and ready to go. Tony Stewart will lead them down to the green flag. It is Smoke's first pole in 156 races since Martinsville, October 2005. Daryl? Tony Stewart, it's a DW. Got a copy, buddy? Yeah, man. Smoke, how special is it today to roll off your 400 start from the pole? That's got to be a real treat. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to, to you, when you think about it. It takes a while to get 400 starts in this series, so uh, pretty proud of that landmark but, uh, milestone, but um, more proud of getting the pole and uh, you know, the hard work that Darian Grubb and, and all the guys at Stuart Haas racing and Hendrick Engine and Chassis and just everybody at our shop, uh, how, how much work they've done and, and how long, how far we've come in such a, a short amount of time. So uh, really proud of all these guys and uh, finally proud to get a pole after four and a half years. Yeah, well, congratulations on that. Smoke, let me ask you, you, you did the tire test here. Uh, the track is green. What are you anticipating as far as tire wear goes? Uh, I don't think it'll be very bad. Uh, you know, it's, we did the tire test here, but what they brought back was different than, than what we ran. So. Uh, that happens quite a bit, so it's, it's, we don't really know exactly what's going to happen here. But, uh, you know, Goodyear's put a lot of effort in, and, uh, you know, right now it's, it's a situation they're, they're really, I think, going above and beyond and, and worked harder than they ever have to make this as good as it can be. So, uh, you know, we, we get a lot of curveballs thrown at us, but it's because they're trying so hard. All right, my friend. Well, uh, you don't get to start the pole all that often. It'd be a good day to capitalize on that with a win. That doesn't happen very often either, so good luck. Thanks, pal. Tony Stewart from the pole. This race is brought to you by Budweiser, the beer that starts with full flavor and ends with a crisp, clean finish. Budweiser, it's what we do. All right, let's take a look at our FedEx understanding the race. These are the trends of the patterns crew chief engineers look at. This is our last nine spring races here, which were NASCAR on Fox. The first caution, average lap 30, but NASCAR will throw that competition caution for teams to look at tires, make adjustments on lap 25. The longest green flag run, roughly 96 laps. That's at least one to two green flag stops that we know we'll have here. The last caution, average lap 305 with roughly 30 laps to go, but will the 2010 pattern continue? A caution with less than 10 to go. And cars finishing on the lead lap, average 14 cars. We actually had 21 cars finish on the lead lap in 2005, the most we've had here. The front row is an interesting one because the Indy Racing League traditionally puts on great events here at Texas, as does NASCAR. The front row are two IRL veterans, Tony Stewart, a past IRL champ, and Sam Hornish in the 77 has three IndyCar wins here in Texas. So a very interesting makeup to the front row. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if the 77 can stay up there. That's the challenge. You know, I was sort of wondering which line Tony Stewart would pick. Of course, the pole sitter has the option inside or outside. It looks like Tony's going to take the inside to start this race, probably because there's no rubber up in that second group right now. Probably because that gives you something to bounce off of <laughs> if you get in there and get loose. Today's race, just over 500 miles, 334 laps. They'll run 45 down pit road, and they'll need to pit every 54 to 58 laps. And we mentioned the competition caution that will come at lap 25. And, and you course, see right, uh, that's unless it becomes a fuel mileage race. Oh, yeah. You see right there, Joey Logano, the 20 car, he'll have to go to the rear of the field because of an engine change. They found metal in the filter on Saturday morning. And, of course, that's one thing that really concerns these guys here is the speeds, the RPM, and 500 miles on these engines. And, and Larry and Mike, I, I think the weather today is going to be even harder on these engines. You got a lot of grip, you got cool temperatures, it's going to make a lot of power. Could be a tough day on motors. You saw Joey Logano dropping to the rear after an engine change. And Joe Nemechek looks like he's also dropping to the back 
of the field. Nemechek qualified 22nd in his number 87. You know, Mike, I don't know that we've had a race in a long, long time, and we've talked about it all since we came on the air. So many unknowns. The new tire that Goodyear has here, a very green racetrack. By far the fastest racetrack that we're actually going to race this new rear spoiler. There's just, I, I think there's, Daryl talked about it, the anticipation of all these things that we don't have a lot of knowledge of. Anxiety. That's the word that comes to mind when I think about starting this race today. A lot of anxiety. Don't know for sure what we got. Now the competition yellow is traditionally to check tire wear after a day of no practice. If the teams lose practice, 25 laps is a long time to hold your breath. But here we go. And you can pit prior to that. You just cannot put fuel in the car until then. DW, I talk about anxiety, anticipation, fast. Reach up there and pull those belts tight one more time. Thank you very much, Mr. McReynolds. I'm, uh, I'm ready to go. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys. Texas style. Johnson was one of those who tiptoed through one and two, backed up a bit. In the front of the field gets single file into three. Larry, I just don't think it's a coincidence that the two guys, two of the guys that did the tire test here, are coming across the line this first lap, running first and second. I know as I walked through the garage area yesterday morning, a lot of fingers being pointed at that 16 car of Greg Biffle. He was really happy with his car on Friday and what practice we got. Kyle Busch. Restraint does not appear in his dictionary. He's going after Clint Boyer, and he is coming to the front on the outside. He'll pounce around. The, he'll go around these guys on the outside because everybody fights for the bottom. A lot of room around the outside if you uh, are brave enough to try it. And he is seventh place to Bush. Kyle Bush in the 18, Clint Boyer in the 33. Two of the 15 drivers that will be trying to race for 800 miles total here today. Sprint Cup and Nationwide Series later on. Another good race car right there, but that 48 car, Larry, I got to believe he's kind of holding his breath these first few laps after what happened to him last fall here in Texas. Well, I think it happened with that guy that's right behind that's him, Sam Hornish in that 77 car. <laughs> I'm sure they're giving each other a pretty big wake. Yeah, Sam Hornish in that 77 cannot keep his car down. You see Casey Kane in the nine gets to the inside. He really slid up the racetrack last time through one and two. A few other drivers coming hard to the front after not so great qualifying runs. Mark Martin and Brian Vickers, who had to start at the tail end of the field. Vickers has already gained 12 spots. And you can see how the front tires on that 77, the car's pushing, front tires not hooking up, and it really washes up the hill coming off the corner. Here is Vickers, who started 42nd. He passes Bobby Labonte and moves up into the top 30 in just four laps of racing. Another tire tester, another guy that tire tested here, had a terrible qualifying run. Juan Paulo Montoya and Matt Kenseth against the 29 of Kevin Harvick. That's back at 19th place. And Harvick's trying that outside. I, I really don't think that's a bad thing. There's not a lot of grip anywhere, so he might as well go where everybody isn't. But looking back at that 17 car, Matt Kenseth, he started back in the 28th position. You've got to believe when it's all said and done, we'll be talking about that 17 car of Kenseth before this thing's well underway. Yeah, there's three guys there you can always kind of keep an eye on. The 17 of Kenseth, the 5 of Martin, and the 31 of Burton. Those guys have a tendency to work their way up to the front at the end of the day. Big, wide racetrack, and without a groove worked in on the bottom, run anywhere you want. And take them as you catch them. Yeah, there's no dirt, no sand, no rubber buildup, so the yeah, grip's pretty good anywhere right now. Stewart, the leader, by three tenths of a second over Greg Biffle. Krista? Greg Biffle had one simple declaration for his team. He came on the radio two laps ago and said simply, the car is really good. Steve? Well, Krista, expect Jimmy Johnson to run the bottom in one and two. There's a lot of bumps in one and two, and if you get up into them, it upsets the car. Three and four, Jimmy's going to move around to find the fast line, but he's going to try to run that bottom in one and two all day. Now I'm looking at several drivers, particularly Hornish and Menard, who can't hold their car on the bottom of the racetrack in the early going. 
why not? Well, and like Darrell pointed out, the front tires, they have no grip. The car has what we call a push, and what a push is, is you're turning the front wheels, but the, the car's not responding. It's just sliding up the racetrack front end first. And a crew chief will take a car if he's a little unsure about the car, and maybe the driver wrecked here the last time he was here, he's gonna tighten him up. He's gonna make that car push so that car won't spin out until they get a chance to feel what the track's gonna do. Get the driver in a comfort zone, then work on the car a little bit. Krista Hornish in the 77 started outside pole and now he has faded to eight. What's up? Well, Mike, you guys nailed it up in the booth. Larry was talking about the car being too tight. DW saying give that driver that comfort. That's exactly what Travis Geisler did for Hornish. Right now the car, they went a little too far. It's just a little bit too tight. So yes, he can't do what he wants to do. They'll have to fix that when they come in on the stops. Larry, if your driver has a I don't want to say history, but if your driver has a history of getting in trouble because the car is too loose, then what are you going to do? You're going to keep a little tug on that steering wheel. You're going to keep it kind of tightened up for him where it's not trying to spin out, like you said, especially getting in the corner at the speed you're running. Dale Earnhardt Jr. alongside Hornish. This will be for ninth place. We're only 10 laps in, but a number of drivers have begun to hunt around, particularly in turns one and two for a higher line as Jimmy Johnson comes off four he does just that gains a little ground on Biffle you see junior complete the pass on Hornish. They'll started ninth now running eighth on the bottom in one and two pretty much but for say Montoya who likes the high line no matter where he is but down in three and four it's been Johnson running at least a groove higher than the two leaders boys who do you think the fastest car on the track is right now. I was going to say, I believe it has something to do with that Lowe's car there. <laughs> the car 48 running car. third right now, Jimmy Johnson. You know, we were talking yesterday in the pre-race show about is Jimmy Johnson stealing all the wins from his other teammates? You know the frustrating thing about being a teammate to Jimmy Johnson? You know everything he's doing and he's still beating you. <laughs> and I think that's the frustration Jeff Gordon especially has been feeling for a number of years. 12 laps complete. Tony Stewart in front of Greg Biffle. Stay tuned for more NASCAR on Fox. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series by the all-new 2011 Super Duty built for tough. And by KFC's new Double Down Sandwich. So much chicken, there wasn't room for a bun. Aerial coverage brought to you by Direct TV. Direct TV, it'll change your life. Call 1 800 Direct TV. As the Direct TV blimp shows you the new leader of the Samsung Mobile 500. At 15 laps, Greg Biffle came storming off turn four and took the lead from Tony Stewart right at the start finish line. We knew that car was going to be good when qualifying was going on Friday. When he came off turn four, Larry, he was hee -haw, and I got it good and boys. Well, and again, they put a lot of effort even into their race runs during that hour and a half practice, so they had the best of both worlds when practice was over. Jimmy Johnson, 1.2 seconds back in third. Casey Kane, 2.3 back. And Jeff Burton. Who we think will be a contender here. He's one of two drivers with multiple wins at this place. Burton runs in fifth. Yeah, Jeff got his very first career win at the inaugural Texas race back in 1997. Carl Edwards has won three. Jeff Burton two. They're the only multiple winners at this track. I think we're going to uh, get a chance here to see what the driver sees. Uh, maybe hop on board with Casey Kane in the nine car and take a little ride down through here. Casey looks mighty comfortable, not uh, working too hard at this point, easing her down in the corner. You can see uh, pretty relaxed. You can see a lot of muscles popping out anywhere, so that means the car's handling pretty good. And here he comes down the front straightaway, across the start finish line. Darrell, is straightaway a misnomer? Is your wheel ever really straight going down this front stretch? You know, it's kind of interesting. You're, you're always turning somewhat left, and particularly through the trial here, the dog leg. But even down the back, believe it or not, you hold the car into the up in the racetrack. You put a little pressure on the wheel going down the back straightaway to the right. And you can see right now, look at look at the speeds. Uh, 152 to 55 miles an hour in the middle of the corner. Let's see, this is pretty good long front straightaway here. Probably get up to a 190 what, Larry? Let's see here. Mid 190s. Whoa. Yeah. 
almost, 96. Almost. Wow. And this, this is well into a race run. On fresh tires, they'll be over 200 miles an hour. Yeah, I think this overcast weather, and this tire's already, everybody said this tire's a little stickier than what they had here in the past. You're going to see some pretty fast speeds all day long. And we're going to see the caution flag in about two laps. And Greg Biffle is going to start lapping cars. That's Robbie Gordon just ahead and Bobby Labonte in front of him. David Gilliland already a lap down along with Mike Bliss and Kevin Conway. Dave Blaney's pulled in the garage. I actually thought we were going to be a little optimistic that we were going to be able to get 25 green flag laps in, but everybody's strung out a little bit, taking their time, knowing that caution's coming. Larry doesn't look like anybody really badly missed the setup for the start of this race. It, it really doesn't. And, and you know, even though I know we've had some unknowns as we're riding with Joey Logano, remember had to start at the rear of the field in this 20 car. He has already moved up to the 27th spot. I think what I've heard so many drivers say is that with this rear spoiler versus the wing that went away about a month ago is the car does the same thing every time you turn down in the corner. It seems to be more predictable than that old wing. Yeah, it's loading the rear of the car up a lot more consistently than the wing did. The wing was a little more erratic. So here is the competition yellow that NASCAR promised uh, the drivers in their morning meeting. This is because the track was washed Saturday and there was no practice. They will throw an early caution flag for the teams to check tire wear, check their setup. Fair for everybody. Yeah, you know, normally we would have had a nationwide race before we run the cup race. But because it got rained out yesterday, there is absolutely zero information about the durability of this tire and how far it can actually go. David Gilliland will be the free pass car, the first car one lap down. And I would anticipate with the give up, we, we, we saw probably a second half to a second three quarter of give up on the stopwatch in 25 laps that all of our leaders will be on pit road, fill it up with Sunoco race fuel, four tires, and I'm sure in the case of a lot of these race cars you're looking at, major adjustments, probably to free these cars up a little bit. And as you always say, don't jump the fence. No. You know, <laughs> right. give me a scale of one to 10 here. I'm, I'm a little tight, pushing the front tires, a little tight. How tight? Two, four, six, eight, 10. Give me a number. Well, I think that goes right back to what I was talking about at the top of the show. You've got to be patient till this rubber gets back down on this racetrack. And it looks like, let's see if they open pit road this time. I don't believe they will. So pit road is still closed. They'll gather up the field and bring them around one more time behind the Chevy Camaro pace car. Chad Canow, somebody in uh, Darien Grubb. Big question at the end of the last race. What would Chad do on that final pit stop? <laughs> First caution of the day. This one a NASCAR competition yellow. Sprint brings you an inside look at what's happening now inside the Sprint Cup series. Not so many eyeballs are glued to the Fox Network and NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile. For more NASCAR stats, in-car audio, live race radio, check out NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile at sprint.com slash speed, where you'll learn things like the fastest lap of the race, which right now is held by Tony Stewart. Mike, I, I feel like Chad Knauss's bo pit, pit box ought to have a curtain in front of it. You know, like uh, in The Wizard of Oz. Pay no attention <laughs> to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> and that big booming voice kind of <laughs> You know what's amazing about that fastest lap by Tony Stewart, and I think this just goes to show you how much grip the track has in these cooler temperatures. That 2867 would have been a respectable qualifying lap on Friday when these guys were in qualifying trim. It would have put you about mid pack, but uh, these yeah. guys are in race trim now. Yeah, if you, you would have started in the top 30 with that lap on your qualifying uh, pass. All right, pit road will be open this time. Let's start with Steve Burns. Well, Mike, Jimmy Johnson said he's really pleased with his car. It's gone from snug to a little bit tight, but he says they're off to a great start. A small air pressure adjustment for the 48. That's all they're going to do. He did say, Mike, that he could pick up the throttle really early and get in the gas right next to him, right in front of him, rather. Casey Kane says the car is bouncing just a little bit on the left front when it gets into turn one. No changes on the nine. Krista. They were going to make a small change to Greg Biffle's car. He called them off. He said, don't do it. This car is sick. And he doesn't mean it's ill and sick equals good, Matt. Paul Center, Tony Stewart, set back on lap 12. The car is snug all the way through the corner. Darian Grubb already calling for a track bar and wedge adjustment and making a significant air pressure change as well on the 14. 
like Biffle will beat him out of the pits, however. Yeah, Tony couldn't get going again. He talked about no rubber. There's no traction in the pit boxes either. So it looked like that little drag race paid off for Biffle. But it definitely looks like having that number one pit spot down there for sitting on the pole paid off for that 14. Like that scooter? You could win it. And other cool prizes, including a VIP race weekend. Log on to ups.com slash racing. Enter for your chance to win. Let's take a look at Tony Stewart's pit stop versus Greg Biffle. If you've noticed, it's just a little bit in every area. Let right side, Jack, left side, and of course, the difference is that right there, which is one reason that Tony Stewart, that 14 car, is leading this race. Yeah, I thought Biffle had him. From up here, it looked like Biffle had him, but uh, when they crossed the line, Smoke was just a teeny bit ahead of him. Now, during the caution period, Michael McDowell stayed out and did not pit with the rest of the lead lap cars, so he did pick up a lap. I was a little bit worried, Mike, because the 12 came down with one to go to put that transponder back on, and there's no way he could get that back on and get back in his position. You see under the car where the mechanic is lying on the ground, that's where the scoring transponder is, All right, bud. Go ahead. is located in a place where it's easily accessible, yet mostly out of harm's way. And it registers at the start-finish line and at every one of the scoring loops around the track. Uh, NASCAR's rule is that if a transponder comes loose from the car, they will allow the team to come in and replace it without penalty. So Keselowski will go back into the position where he was running before he came to the pits for that replacement. I mean, that transponder is important in so many ways to the team and the NASCAR. It's also how NASCAR monitors pit road speed on pit road with the loops that are on, on the actual pit road. Speaking of Brad, next Sunday, NASCAR on Fox moves to Talladega, where Brad tries to defend his win from last year. Coverage of Sprint Cup racing from Talladega begin Sunday at noon Eastern 9 a.m. Pacific in high definition right here on Fox and boys I was down there for the test they did a, two or three weeks ago of course we'll be racing this new rear spoiler there as well it'll be the fourth race and these cars are going to be bad fast at Talladega just want them to do away with that yellow line on the last lap <laughs> <laughs> you want to see some excitement <laughs> just do away that line on the last lap there you see the spoiler and the uh, the fin the shark fin down the rear window now extends all the way back to the spoiler for a side force and also to keep these cars on the ground should they get turned back into the wind we're getting ready for the restart after caution number one of the day the competition caution and there you see that front straight away and how curved it is as the field comes to turn three, Tony Stewart has elected the inside for the restart. Greg Biffle, Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Busch, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Clint Boyer, Casey Kane, Jeff Burton, Kurt Busch, the top ten. You sort of float the car through the trial here. It almost it doesn't feel like it's really hooked anything. It just kind of floats. How about a little Monday Monday crank it up for this first restart of the day? a bit Kyle Busch to second Jimmy Johnson to third I can hear his radio now what did y'all do to my race car well, you know one thing I watched him do going through three and four the last time he overdrove the corner and he paid the price and that's how Kyle Busch completed the pass that's how Jimmy Johnson got back by him if you see him now he's all over the back bumper that 48 car of Johnson and that's probably just a product of really 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 low air pressure anticipating a pretty long run here Matt Kenseth had the same kind of issue on the restart dropped back just a bit. There he is way up on the high side in front of Paul Menard. That's really a balancing act don't you think Larry between coming in and making an adjustment lowering the air pressure and maybe getting it a little too low kind of looking for that happy medium. Dick what about Kenseth. Well one of his big problems in that first run Mike was that they had the car set up too low and he was bouncing off the racetrack. Trying to adjust for that on the pit stop. 
Well, I think that's a product spinning off of what Darrell was saying, low air pressure, and then the speeds we're running. You anticipate the speeds are going to be slower in the race, but I think with the grip this place has, these speeds are pretty fast. Now, right now, we're watching Biffle in the 16, Boyer in the 33. This is a battle for fifth. Krista, looks like that 16 car's got his hands full right now. Yeah, Larry, but really nothing's wrong with the car. It's like you said, they took a little bit of air out of the left rear. Remember, Greg really likes the car. They talked about making an adjustment to the car itself. And Greg Biffle, the driver, told Greg Irwin, the crew chief, no, I like the car. Just the air a little low in the left rear. So look for him to come back up anytime. Boy, we saw the 77 Hornish almost catch the wall off turn two. And again in this run, Daryl, Sam cannot hold that car on the bottom. No, the thing just took off. Looked like he had it turned down in there pretty good, but then the front tires just broke loose and the front of the car headed for the wall. David Rudiman gets underneath Hornish, takes a 12th spot away. You know, back to Krista's report is we got some three wide racing down that straightaway you showed a while ago, Mike. This is Ambrose in the 47, Martin in the 5, Kenseth in the 17, Menard in the 98. Right now, this is a battle for about 22nd, 23rd. And just to help you a little bit, folks, with pushing and loose. Pushing is when the front of the car is headed to the wall. That's just pushing. Loose is when the back of the car is headed for the wall. That's loose. Or you're turning the wheel more to the left with a push. You're turning it back right to be when you're loose. That's push loose. <laughs> hey, Tony Stewart is trying to check out here. He's got a one second lead on Kyle Busch. Jimmy Johnson just a car length behind Bush and Dale Earnhardt Jr. within striking distance. Then it's a pretty good gap back to fifth place Clint Boyer, his teammate Jeff Burton. And now Johnson for second. But we heard Steve Burns talk about the 48 car Jimmy Johnson running the low line in one and two. Now he's forced to run up the racetrack right here in one and two. But how he got that pass on that 18 car of Kyle Busch, he went in high and got that momentum through the corner the last time through three and four. And that's pretty uh, that's pretty bold for the 48 team because normally you think about Jimmy Johnson being a bottom feeder. He's usually just hanging around that white line on the inside of the racetrack. He doesn't venture up to the top very often. Let's go back to 12th place and pick up David Rudiman, who's running 5.8 seconds off the lead. Steve? Mike, he's having a great run on the pit stop. He said the alternator light keeps coming off and on. It's annoying. His most recent comment, the alternator light is on and staying on. Stand by. And, and normally they'll have that light set if it falls maybe below about 14 or 13 volts. You, you, you're demanding so much of the electrical system with the ignition system, the radiator fan, blowers for the driver, blowers for the tire beads. There's a lot of demand on the electrical system of these cars. New third place car, Dale Jr. Ducked underneath Kyle Busch in the back straightaway. And Matt, he's going to the front. And also trying to keep track of the track as it continues to change as more rubber gets worked in over the course of that first 25 lap run. He says this car which is slightly snug to neutral, but now he says this second run, the car is much tighter, telling Lance McGrew that information so that way he can formulate a game plan and keep track of how big of a change they need to make on that next stop. You know, I noticed on the pass, Dale Jr.'s lap was a 29-15. Clean air, 29-90. So two or three tenths off on the pass. Now Jeff Gordon backed up a little bit on the start. He was tentative those first 25 laps. No more. Gordon, who started at 12, has climbed to 8. 48 laps complete. Coincidence? I think not. That's when the 48 car took the lead. Jimmy Johnson jumped right out ahead of Tony Stewart by half a second. Here is the pass. Tony Stewart saw that that 48 car of Johnson was faster. No sense in fighting issue here right now this early in the race. You know, we normally have a three day race weekend. How about that 10,000th career lap led? Remember, he was a rookie just back in 2002. But normally we have a three day race weekend. Chad Knauss and Jimmy Johnson in practice on Friday before qualifying. That's all they worry about is qualifying. But I think because of the unknown with the tire, with that rear spoiler, but mainly the forecast for Saturday, Chad Knauss, Jimmy Johnson elected to spend a lot of time on race setup in Friday's practice. Rick Hendrick who owns this and three other cars in this race uh, including the 24 of Jeff Gordon that is about to pass Clint Boyer for fourth Rick Hendrick reflecting back on 25 years in the sport 
uh, the other day was shocked kind of kind of surprised to learn that his cars had led 50,000 laps in NASCAR competition since Hendrick Motorsports began. But think of Jimmy Johnson who's led 10 of those 50,000 all by himself. The other thing it's pretty impressive with that 48 car and I, I believe this if we showed up here and no practice roll them out of the truck put them on the line we're going to go racing who you think it had the best car. Yep. You know the biggest thing about Hendrick Motorsports they are closing in on that 200th win for that organization. I get a feeling it's going to be a dogfight who can <laughs> lay claim to the 200th win for that organization. Only a few wins away from that number. Folks remember who won the first race for Rick Hendricks team. I'll let you chew on that one for a little bit. It was this car number if that's any help to you. The one that Mark Martin drives today and Mark said despite the hiring of Casey Kane for the 2012 season Mark is adamant that he will finish out this year and next year in the number five with Alan Gustafson and that his big concern this spring would be the legacy of the five and who he could turn that car over to that would do better with it than he did and he is very pleased uh, with the choice of Casey Kane and you might wonder what HendrickCars.com is uh, that's a website that you go to uh, Rick told me that when they run that on the car it blows out all the phone lines <laughs> as people call and want to know what it is and, uh, and how it works so Casey Kane who currently runs in ninth place in the Budweiser Ford of Richard Petty Motorsports primarily owned by the Gillette family uh, will stay in this car the remainder of this season but his plans for 2011 right now that's the biggest question in racing that the number five car won't be available till 2012. So what will Casey do in 2011. That's a good question as we get a little beer can battle here Kurt Busch pulling up alongside Casey Kane for ninth. Guy behind him not letting any grass grow under his feet either. Well, a couple of those guys right there we're looking at they've they've won no pun intended on the grass with the Scots car 99 of Carl Edwards again has the most wins of anyone here in Texas three wins you look at Kurt Busch that two car up there won the last time we were here in the fall didn't have the best race car but they had the best strategy at the end stretch that fuel mileage. Edwards 11.4 seconds off the lead. The only three time winner at this track. And Greg Biffle's coming back. That, that's a product of low air pressure. Maybe even too low air pressure. Takes a number of laps, sometimes 12, 15 laps with that pressure to finally get up to optimum operating uh, pressure. And I think that's what we're seeing with Greg now. But I think they're going to have to do something different because now he's given up almost 11 seconds to our leader Jimmy Johnson. He can't do that. You can't give up that much time in the early going. And the one thing I'm noticing we've not seen it. I don't think since we got here is the sun is out. So that's going to change the conditions of this racetrack. Juan Montoya coming into the picture as Kurt Busch battles Carl Edwards for ninth place Montoya Kane and Rudiman closing in. 57 laps complete in Texas. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Budweiser. Join Budweiser as we support America's troops with a $250,000 donation to the USO. You can help our efforts when you buy a Casey Kane Armed Forces diecast car. Visit Budweiser.com for details. The year was 2000. Driver number eight Dale Earnhardt Jr. scoring his first win in what is now the Sprint Cup Series in only his 12th Sprint Cup start. A big day in Texas for the Earnhardts. Jeff Burton also got his first career victory here as we mentioned it was in the first race for this track in 1997. He's talking about turning the steering wheel. You can see how much he's turning left there. Uh, you can see his hands. But right now just looking at the scoring monitor Dale Earnhardt Jr. in this 88 car running in the third spot seems to have one of the quicker cars on the racetrack our leader Jimmy Johnson in the 48 really starting to catch some lap traffic right now. You know what, what how you know that's a pretty comfortable car Mike Larry you got both hands over on the left side of the steering wheel. You're not anticipating having to turn that thing back to the right very quickly. So that tells you the car is really stable and under him really, really well. And you see that he's all but caught Tony Stewart 
as they run a second and a half behind race leader Jimmy Johnson. And that's a driver's uh, dream right there, Mike, where you can put both hands over there and just tug on the wheel a little bit, work the throttle, turn the wheel, really make good time like that. We were talking about engines. Just look at the RPM right there. How many RPM this engine is turning down this front straightaway. You're going to see almost 9600 RPM and it's a 334 lap race with a lot of green flag runs. It makes the engine guys so different, so nervous. Dale, Dale Jr. to second, Stewart. Has a look back underneath, a little bit of traffic ahead in the bottom lane. Well, right now we're talking about Rick Henrik and all the accomplishments. He got a car running first. He got a car running second. Tony Stewart running third and Jeff Gordon running fourth. Looking pretty good. Pretty Jeff racing. Boyer, that Childers car is in the fifth right now. When we last saw Denny Hamlin, he had a very, very sore knee, but he slugged it out and ran the whole day in our last Sprint Cup race. Dick Bergren can update it on Hamlin's recuperation. Well, the recuperation is going well, Mike. The race is not. He is currently in the 19th position, and there is concern in Hamlin's pit about the possibility of a loose right rear wheel. He has been told by the crew that if he comes in to change it on green, he'll probably lose two laps, so he's staying out so far. Well, the good news, Dick, is we're probably only about 12 to 14 laps away from what would be green flag pit stops. These guys pitted on lap 28. Somewhere between 82 and 86 will be the next scheduled pit stop for this crew. And when the crew chief says something like that, what he's really saying is you need to stay out there 12 more laps. Hamlin Strong here usually finished second here last fall. There's the gap first to second. Jimmy Johnson, your leader here. Dale Earnhardt Jr. second here. There's Tony Stewart in red. Here's an AT&T race break from the Hollywood Hotel. All right, thanks, Mike and guys. And Ryan Newman, the last week's winner in Phoenix, who led only four laps, but enough to pull out the victory. Currently running 18th, Jeff Hammond. Yeah, right now, Ryan is trying to just to keep that momentum going, and we're watching this car. They started, you know, a little bit close to this, but it looks like, you know, Ryan's car is still a little bit too tight for him. I look for those guys that Tony Gibson makes some adjustment. His crew chief, he'll get better for the end of the day. Now, he snapped a winless streak of 77 races. Another guy, Kevin Harvick, has gone 114 races since his last win, that 2007 Daytona 500 career longest losing streak. It's early here, but you see where he started, and you see where he's headed. Well, that's one of the problems in talking to Gil Martin. I was at their shop earlier this week, and he said that's one thing they have problems with right now is getting the car where it's good for the long run and the key thing is for them is to try to come up with a combination ahead of the wind tunnel that week to understand better about this new spoiler what the balance package is going to be needed for here at Texas. Juan Pablo Montoya moving up there inside of uh, Carl Edwards just behind Jeff Burton. Now he's the one who said he, he liked his car. He was the one who said hey I don't mind if it rained this week at least coming into the race and setting his car up. Yeah, right now we got a dog fight right here between these three guys. They definitely going at you see Casey King going to the bottom of the racetrack. Carl run right through the middle and Juan Pablo, he's all up on the high line. So they're all looking and trying to figure out where this thing needs to go to get through this next run. I think Larry McReynolds was talking about we got pit stops coming up. So they're hunting around to try to give information back to their crew chiefs so they can make the best better adjustments and that battle for the 789 in that window and Greg Biffle who led early in this he's led 13 laps Tony Stewart's led the most looks like he's having some problems yeah it looks like that air pressure adjustment that Greg Irwin and everybody did on the 16 car has not paid off for him he had one of the fastest cars at the early part of the race but Chris we've seen this before at other racetracks when we have a rate a green racetrack the way it goes through transitions sometimes when you think the car is right well it's not and the track is definitely I think change for them while the 48 car Jimmy Johnson it's worked really well for him Chad Canals. No crashes spin so far so that racing spoiler kind of a non issue at this point. So far non issue everything looking pretty good. We've seen a couple guys get a little sideways like that 77 car right in front of him right now. But uh, other than that it's been pretty good. And if you want to text from your AT&T phone the car number for the pit crew you think is the most valuable in each race you can do that text to 2258 delivered by AT&T the nation's fastest 3G network. Thanks, Chris. 74 laps complete, 260 to go, and two of the Childress cars swapping positions. Uh, Jeff Burton moving up to fifth, Clint Boyer to sixth. Last week at Phoenix, we had a big cat and mouse game among some of the independent. Now we have a lead change as Dale Earnhardt Jr. goes past Jimmy Johnson, 
and takes over the lead for the first time today. And I'm going to tell you what, we've got a good crowd here today, just a few <laughs> empty seats. I think they letting you know that that 88 car just, just took the lead. They jumped, they jumped out of their seats. Pit stops have begun under the green flag, and here comes Kevin Harvick toward Krista. Kevin Harvick is definitely coming in early because he's sensing a vibration. He had been very happy on this run. They have moved from 18th to 12th, but he said, I've got to come in early. I am feeling something funny, a vibration with this race car. Brad Keselowski also in right behind Harvick. And, and when you have a new tire that you have no information on, data on, the drivers, they start they start to imagining things. If it starts vibrating a little bit, they think, uh oh, one of those tires coming apart. One car slow in the backstretch may have caught the wall up in turn number two, and it's Brian Vickers. He's slow and heading for the pits. Now, Brian had just went a Whoa, lap down. Oh, he's not going to make it. And this is not going to be a good break for Kevin Harvick. The caution is out. I thought he had all but caught the wall out of turn number two. That must have been when that right rear went down. Yeah, he, he definitely got a right rear tire down. When the car comes around like that, it's a pretty good indication the right rear is down. So Harvick and Keselowski get caught out, making their pit stops before the yellow flag. We'll see how it sorts out with the scoring as Vickers makes it on to pit road for service. And Mike, this is what, what I was right, talking about. Right, right. Drivers start worrying about these tires on these longer runs. But the good thing what Harvick and Keselowski will be able to do here is they're obviously going to stay out and then they'll take the wave around, which means when we get the one to go, they're out on the racetrack behind the pace car. They'll be able to go all the way back around. Yeah, they've given up a lot of track position, but they'll be back on the lead lap with fairly equal tires to the other guys. Travis Quapp will be the free pass car. And before the lead change, I was saying at Phoenix, we had quite a cat and mouse game among some of the independent drivers, each trying to not be the first one out of the race. They go in the garage, come back out and run, go in the garage. Well, there'll be no such battle today. Dave Blaney is the first car out, and that's a blow to Michael Waltrip, who had hoped that the 55 car would pile up enough points here in Texas that when Michael climbs aboard it next week at Talladega, they might not have to qualify on time. But Blaney will get points for 43rd position today. They are out of the race. Well, the big fear that Michael had on that, should we have rain next Saturday when qualifying actually is there, that they wanted to be as high in owner points as possible. Right. Oh, heck, it hardly ever rains at a racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> just just this year. <laughs> Here they all come to pit road. Steve Burns. Jimmy Johnson trust starting to struggle just a little bit. Mike, he said his car has gone from neutral to really tight on entry. His teammate Jeff Gordon, he's been adjusting his line throughout the early part of this race. He says, I need help turning. They're going to take a half pound out of the right front tire on the 24. Matt. Leader Dale Earnhardt Jr. will stop a little short in his box, but he does slide forward a little bit, so that way he can help his exit out of his pit stall. He said the car pushing on entry and equally as free on exit. Lance McGrew, slight air pressure change on the 88. Here comes Jimmy Johnson Jr. and Smoke hit the gas, beat Johnson off pit road, and then it's a log jam behind them. It's just one of the accolades of sitting on the pole. You get that very first pit box leaving pit road, and you can see right there, picked up two spots for smoke. Tony Stewart, that 14 group. The Darien Rub, Grub led crew cheering on Tony Stewart after that pit stop by the pole sitter. A little bit of cleanup going on on the front straightaway, and then we'll get back to green in about two laps here in Texas. Brian Vickers made an extended pit stop for uh, damage from the right rear tire. Matt Kenseth made two pit stops as they made adjustments and repairs uh, to the front bodywork in front of the left front wheel. And Bill Elliott in the Wood Brothers car was on pit road for a long time with the hood up. Meanwhile, Mike Bliss has taken the James Finch car to the garage, uh, followed by Michael McDowell in the Prism Motorsports entry. David Gilliland in the uh, 37 car. He's on pit road, Larry, and he's doing something I think a lot of these guys are, are, are complaining about. He was raising the front of his car up. No practice, get that car a little too low, that thing starts bottoming out, makes it very difficult to drive. And this track is very, very bumpy, especially down in one and two. I think we actually heard Matt Yoakum or Steve Burns talking about some of their drivers that they were in their pits talking about moving the car around to stay out of the bumps. 
See Bill Elliott back on pit road with the hood up. Here's Chris Myers. Yeah, Mike, if you tuned in a little bit late, uh, just a quick recap. Uh, Greg Biffle took the lead early from pole sitter Tony Stewart. And then into the pits after the competition yell. Look how close this is out, but you then can clearly see that Tony Stewart beats Biffle out for the lead. And on lap 48, it's Team 48. Jimmy Johnson taking the lead. He's won three of the first six races on the points leader. Moments ago, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in front, but Tony Stewart has led the most laps so far, 35. And then we had our first caution caused by action on the track. And the first real spin here is Brian Vickers uh, brings out what has been the second caution. And we're getting ready to go green, so let's head back up to Daryl Larry and Mike. Thanks, Chris. During that last green flag run, Kyle Busch fell all the way back to about 18th position. Said they had trouble with the finding the balance on the car, and they've taken a major a major swing at it with his number 18. Back on pit road was Matt Kenseth. Brian Vickers still there, and we may restart without Bill Elliott. The hood still up on his Ford. Carl Edwards, no grass growing under his feet. <laughs> you like, you I like that, didn't you? You and I just can't resist, can we? <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what, his boys picked him up a lot of time on that last pit stop. Carl Edwards in that 99 started in 18th. He's now inside the top five in the fourth position. They're just mowing him down in there, Larry. Green one one. flag. <laughs> Green flag to begin. Lap 83. Dale Jr. did not take off with the briskness of Tony Stewart. So Stewart and Jimmy Johnson lead Junior off turn two. He's under fire from Jeff Gordon in that special oh, forces yeah. Chevy. And that 24 car, I've been watching him, he's inching his way to the lead of this race before long. Bill this Elliott back in the race one lap down as the Hendrick teammates battle right here. Well, you look at that 24 car of Jeff Gordon. Remember, one year since he's been to victory lane, this was the last time he won was this race one year ago. Oh, but he's had a couple of really close almosts. Real close. Oh. Yeah, third and second the last two races. Couldas, wouldas, and shouldas. Well, he'll take that spot away from Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88, but here comes Boyer in that 33, and the guy on the move, aside from Carl Edwards in the 99, is Montoya in that 42. Remember, started 21st. I didn't think there was any question watching him on Friday. He'd be a factor early in this race. Krista? Midway through that run, Juan Montoya told his team he felt like he had a top five car. They just made a small adjustment. He said he was getting too loose at the end of the run. They asked, do you need anything else? Maybe a grilled cheese. He said, yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> I tell you what, the man loves Mexican food. Every time I run into him or read anything he's doing, he's out at some Mexican restaurant. And he goes to a lot of movies. Friday was the first time Montoya had qualified outside the top 10 this season. Clint Boyer was all over Dale Jr. Trying to grab fourth spot away. That's not going to happen. Not right now. But you know, back to that 42 car of Montoya, I think it's been one of the cars we've been talking a lot about this year because he made the chase last year. And honestly, last week at Phoenix was the first time that they've closed the deal on a race. They've had a fast race car. They've led laps every week, but they finally got a top five finish at Phoenix. Let's get down to Steve Burns. Is your 24 car right now with those unknowns? Well, the Dupont National Guard Chevrolet is pretty good. Um, we didn't get a lot of practice, but we, the team is very well prepared. We got a lot of runs in on Friday. I think it's paying off. Setup wise, we're a lot like we ran, you know, Las Vegas. So I don't think the spoilers change a whole lot by yourself, but you definitely have to work traffic a lot different. Jeff's doing a very good job of that. Next thing. I haven't seen any indication watching these cars when they're nose to tail that the spoiler is affecting them one way or another. They look pretty neutral to me. Joey Logano, A.J. Allmendinger, the 43, last week's pole sitter and last week's winner, the 39, Ryan Newman. They're all battling for 17th. Remember that the 20 started out back after an engine change. And here comes Newman. You know, another guy that I've been watching since the drop of the green flag, we talked about him just a little bit ago, Denny Hamlin in that 11 car finished second here in the fall race, started 29th. Just think about it. Three weeks ago today, we raced on Monday at Martinsville. He wins the race. 
less than three weeks. He was having surgery on his left knee, and here he is showing some gut, just like he did at Phoenix. He's cracked the top 10 now in this 11. And, 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 go ahead, Mike. A lot of people, including in this booth, questioned his decision to run that whole race at Phoenix and not get out of the car when they had to change the batteries so that he could recuperate faster. He said, my guys give 100% for me. I want them to know I'm giving 100% for them. And that's why Hamlin stayed in the car and toughed it out. Now, Kurt Busch. Currently in 14th position. Let's get out of his pit and learn about this rear spoiler. Matt? And Kurt Busch has seen both sides of the spectrum, both loose and tight so far. Has Kurt reported any aero tight type issues related more to the spoiler? I just, he feels like that the car has just got a lot of downforce on the back of the car and is taking the front out of the racetrack. So we'll work on that and see if we can get it back. All right, he's dropped about six or seven positions since that restart. Just remember one thing, NASCAR loved that rear wing. I mean, that was their baby. That This COT was something they were not going to mess with. So for them to take the wing off, them being NASCAR, and say, we're going to put the spoiler on, you can believe there was a lot of research, a lot of development, and a lot of wind tunnel time before they made that change. Because if they're going to change, they want to make it better. They don't want to make it worse. Here's your interval first to second, Earl. Tony Stewart over Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon. 92 laps complete in the Samsung Mobile 500 of Texas. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by AT&T Rethink Possible, by new Pennzoil Ultra with hyper-cleansing technology, and by Avatar. Bring it home on Blu-ray and DVD April 22nd. Coming up on 99 laps, that'll be 235 to go. Tony Stewart continued the string of no repeat pole winners in 2010. He's led 52 laps, and there you see his lead over Jimmy Johnson, the point standing leader. From fourth to second. And Johnson has led 28 laps today. Jeff Gordon racing for the Special Forces, did a little work uh, with them during this week, a little bit of advanced uh, training with the National Guard. I guess it's helped. He's third. Trouble, turn three. One car spins right down to the apron, and it is Brian Vickers, second time today. Yeah, not a good day for that Red Bull team at all. Not a very happy driver either. They've been in the pits about 10 times working on that thing ever since the first right rear went down. Looks like it could have possibly cut it down again. You can hear the you can hear that tire disintegrating at right rear. Of course all of a sudden it just goes. You know the strange thing about that Daryl you know we, we talk break, about concerns of the tire normally it's the right front tire you're concerned about that's the one teams tend to get aggressive with well Larry if this uh, blade is loading up the rear of the car a little bit more than what we've seen in the past that could be possibly having a small effect a lot more aerodynamic force on yeah. that right rear than than there was with the wing Brad Keselowski will be the free pass car this is the third caution of the day and the second one for Brian Vickers all right Brad Keselowski the 12 he was one of the cars that took the wave around that put him one lap down he's out there on fairly fresh tires now he gets the free pass voila just like Kevin Harvick he's on the lead lap now with that 12 car wasn't that long ago he was two down pits are open Steve Jimmy Johnson's big concern. He just told Chad Canals, I might have hit the carcass of the tire from the 83. Take a look at that splitter. Jimmy getting four tires and a chassis adjustment. Jeff Gordon says, I'm still too tight. Free me up. Krista. Juan Montoya told his team the adjustment you made last time definitely helped. But if I'm running the top, I'm a little tight into the corner. I'm on the edge. Matt. Could have a change in strategy here for Dale Earnhardt Jr. They may go right side tires only. He does. He is already away. He was a little loose. Four tires for Tony Stewart. No changes on the 14. Well, maybe that was the time to try it. We saw a lot of cars do it, like Jeff Gordon, the 24 car. These guys have about 17 laps on those tires when this caution came out. When Brian Vickers lost that tire, it was right in front of the race leader, Tony Stewart. Dodges one. That was not what Chad would do. Take two. 
Today's aerial coverage brought to you by Direct TV to track the progress of your Direct TV head to head bracket. Log on to directtv.com slash NASCAR. And Mike, look at that. I mean, here we are Monday, a rain out. Look at those stands and look at the infield. I, I, I mean, not a lot of people left. There's a nice crowd here today. Before pit stops, Jimmy and Chad discussed whether or not to put four tires on the 48. Sorry, man, that's going to work out fine. I don't think those guys on two tires with, you know, 15 laps on their left sides are going to be, well, I don't think that's what they're going to want, man. Ten four? We were going to do two, but I opted out the last second there. You heard. Good call, good call. <laughs> <laughs> little cheerleading there from Excuse Jimmy me. Johnson. That was after the pit stop, of course, as Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Gordon, Jeff Burton, all with two tires, Jamie McMurray in front of Tony Stewart and Jimmy Johnson with four. Green flag. Now, ideally, what you'd like to do with those four tires is pounce on those guys with two. Don't ride around here three or four laps. Ooh, boy, Johnson, Johnson in the 48 got in big trouble down in turn one and two. He really stacked them up behind him. He almost backed right into Clint Boyer. Trying to get off turn two, Boy. and he's still not right. And I just think that's a product of what Daryl talked about earlier. It's just low air pressure. And the reason these guys run low air pressure in the beginning on a long run, it gains so much, you have to start the air pressure down. So the first car with four fresh tires is Tony Stewart in fifth, battling Greg Biffle. Let's go to Biffle's pit and Kristen. With crew chief Greg Irwin and car was sick to start the run, then it went loose, and then you made the decision to take two tires. Why that decision and how is the car now? Uh, we had a we had an equalized right rear tire on that first stop. Uh, lost a lot of track position there. Uh, the car just drives so much better up front, but uh, our three and post fusion uh, was really good at the start of the race. We're just trying to maybe capitalize, get a little read on later in the race, see what two tires does. All right, thanks, Greg. Yeah, and sick equals good. That's how good it was <laughs> okay. at the start of the race. Need to explain an equalized tire. These tires have an inner liner. It's a safety shield. And you run the air pressure about 12 to 20 pounds higher in that inner liner. If you get a leak between the inner liner and the outer tire, it's what we call equalized. The air pressure equalized, and it causes a very bad vibration in the tire. Now, Jimmy Johnson has backed up to ninth place with four fresh tires. What's up, Steve? Thought he had a flat tire, Mike. He just told Chad Canals that he backed off to make sure everything was okay. It's fine. It's not a flat, but he thought so for a moment. Watch him back up in front of the 33 of Boyer here because this almost stacked up half the field. You can see the car step out on him, and that right there is where he rolled out of the throttle to make sure, and you're right, between Boyer, the 33, Montoya, and the 42 could have been big. What do you think went through his mind right at that point? the race last fall here same yes. kind of deal he got stepped wow. out on him a little bit and uh, Sam Hornish and he <laughs> I together. thought you were going to say his first thought was where's that 77 car <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Mack in the Bass Pro Shop Chevy having a strong run here as Tony Stewart comes around the outside for fourth place Dick uh, McMurray started in the 15th spot Mike and he is having a terrific run today right from the get go that car has been close to the way McMurray wants it early on it was just a little bit tight by lap 63 he said he didn't think the crew should change anything on the pit stops he restarted fifth picked up one spot McMurray now in the fourth position. You know, this has always been a good racetrack for Jamie. I can remember when he drove back for Chip Ganassi and Felix Sabatis. It was always a good racetrack for him. He's actually going to be doing some double duty. He's actually driving the, the car for JR Motorsports for Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the Nationwide Series for a few races, including this afternoon. At what, 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock, they're going to start that Nationwide race this afternoon. It was rained out on Saturday. Jeff Burton has been gobbled up by Jeff Gordon. Yeah, this is a battle for second between the two Jeffs. Remember, Burton's one of those guys we said, you know, just keep an eye on him, him and Kenseth and uh, Mark Martin. Those are three guys that quietly slipped their way up into the top five or six before the day's over with. Whoa. Turn two, Sam Hornish had been running lock that down, high there. line successfully. No more. Lock it down, lock it down. All right, we didn't hit nothing, Travis. We spun. We'll need time. That car has been severe loose ever since the race started. 
Watch the white hood of that, what, that white 77. Just there she goes, loose in like that. There's nothing you can do. Loose, folks. See those rear tires smoking? Yeah. That's loose. Daryl, he almost saved it and then locked her down. Fourth caution of the day at lap 113 for Sam Hornish. Now, for all those guys that came to pit road to just change two right side tires, this is not really what you wanted to see, especially our top three that's on those right side tires only. Let's watch Casey Kane's view of this from the Budweiser Ford. Come on, get low, get low, get low, get low, lower, but lower. You're all good. You're all clear. Caution's out. Casey Kane is running all the way back in the 21st position. Steve Burns was telling me they were fighting some of the problems other teams have been fighting. His splitter, the front splitter, has been bottoming out against the racetrack. I've just seen so many guys come in, raise up their cars. And of course, you can put a shim in the uh, top of one of those Packers and raise their car up a little bit. I think we got a little battle. Whoa. For, whoa. Oh, there something. goes the cone. I think Jeff Burton hit that cone. Several people did. <laughs> he hit it first, and now. I don't know how they'll be here at the Speedway, but out on the road out there, they give you a ticket. Steve. The call for uh, Jeff Gordon, two tires only on the 24, left sides. Well, he's one of the teams that changed just the right side. Last time, Krista, how about Greg Biffle? Yeah, this time, Larry, it's gonna be a four-tire stop for the 16, Matt. A two-tire change for the 14 of Tony Stewart. One of their issues, there was a tear-off from another car stuck on his grill, and the water temperature was climbing. So we've got strategy all over the place now. Watch the uh, orange cone that signifies the entrance point to pit road. Jeff Burton's not going to get in there. He clips it. Biffle hits it. Let's see who else uh, may have picked up a little damage there. One. Two, three. Ah, oh, the hits just keep on coming. And I would say as we speak, it's under review. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Nationwide Insurance. Call or visit us online for a quote today. By FedEx, we understand. You need reliable shipping options, FedEx. And by DirecTV, no one has more HD channels than DirecTV. That entrance onto pit road has drawn someone a penalty. That someone is Jeff Burton. Commitment cone violation. Let's show you why. From the direct TV blimp, here they come toward the entrance of pit road. Note where Burton is now. Pace car in red. Dale Jr. is first. Burton second. And as Burton moves up the racetrack there, that gives Jeff Gordon a free run on the bottom lane toward the pit. Burton decides to come down to pit, but makes that call too late. Hits the cone, violation, pass through penalty. And you just think about it, Jeff Burton had the penalty last week at Phoenix for pitting out of his box. He could never make that lap up. Sam Hornish, too fast entering the pits. He goes to the tail end of the line. Dale Jr., Jamie Mack, David Rudiman, Clint Boyer, Mark Martin, Denny Hamlin. Here we go. And those top 10 cars from Dale Earnhardt Jr., now Jamie McMurray, back through Matt Kenseth, all those cars stayed out on that caution. Well, McMurray, what a runoff, too. Got that high side on him. Shot around Dale Jr. and into the lead. This time it's Clint Boyer who backed up the field coming out of turn two, and they're all stacked up behind Boyer. It's a little bit old. Boyer's got a problem. He's uh, He's got a tire down or something. He's in the way. And he could not get to pit road that time. He's going to have to go another mile and a half to get back there if he indeed has a problem. I believe. Hang on, man. Hold your line here. Hold your line. Got a bunch of them coming. Now they swept the track down at that end, so Boyer gets up that high, does not spin as Hornish did. I almost believe it's a right front on on the on Boyer's car on the 33 because it looked soft when it went by here. We stay under green, and it's Jamie McMurray, the Daytona 500 winner to lead them around in front of Dale Jr. and David Rudiman. But I'm gonna tell you what, last time through three and four, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that 88 was eating that rear bumper of that one car of McMurray's. I think McMurray got just a great run off of the high side there, and that's how he got around you. Whoa, you see the back of that 88 step out. There's a slick spot over there off turn two. Right about, right when you get, see that black, see that black patch right there? Whoa. 
That'll knock the car loose sometime if you hit it under power, kind of crossing it. But that was down in three and four the last time. It's almost like Dale Jr. in the 88 picked up the throttle so quick he got loose. Matt, how about the 33? Not exactly sure which tire it is, not taking a chance. Shane went with four. They lose a lap in the process. Meanwhile, early leaders, Tony Stewart, Jimmy Johnson, Greg Biffle, they're caught up in a mess of traffic. Oh, here. baby, that's a wad right there. From Martin Truex. Look at them fighting for position here, trying to get, I mean, they're just in the throttle, out of the throttle, cars are a little dicey. Don't believe that first polar's having much of an effect on running side by side or nose to tail. Doesn't seem to be. It's done anything, it's tightened them up. Reagan passes Truex. Now Kane, the man in the middle, as they go by Keslowski. But Keslowski in that 12 car, he's stacking them up in the middle of both ends of the racetrack. He, especially like down in one and two the last time. Burton behind him now, and Regan Smith. And Keslowski couldn't get to the bottom, much get to the bottom either. Larry, I know these cars have got to be really handling good, and they got to have good solid downforce on them to be able to run together like that at 190, 200 miles an hour. See Burton here going to the outside of Keslowski in the 12, making that pass. Of course, Jeff Burton in that 31 car, he's still on the lead lap, had that penalty the last time the caution came out for the commit cone violation coming on the pit road. The problem with Clint Boyer was a right rear tire. On his number 33. Here's our Toyota front runners, Rudiman third, Hamlin fourth, Kyle Bush ninth, and Logano tenth. And all of those cars were cars that elected to stay out on that last caution we had just about 10 laps ago. Rudiman's car actually looks pretty good. He's putting a little gap between he and uh, and Denny Hamlin in the 11 car. A.J. Allmendinger heading Boy. to pit road. Reed Sorensen uh, is on pit road and they're pushing Sorensen toward the garage as Allmendinger comes in unexpectedly. What a right rear there tire trouble. There's Sorensen's car. And here's Steve. And Mike, the word we got on the 43 of Allmendinger was that it was overheating, but they just came in and topped off gas. We didn't see him do anything else. Well, and you would tend to think that they probably pulled a little tape off the nose because these guys get so aggressive with that tape on the nose, it helps the front downforce, the pressure on the front tires, helps the straightaway speed. Sometimes you get a little carried away with tape on the nose at a mile and a half racetrack like Texas. And with no practice, you know, you sometimes gamble a little bit. You go too far and make the thing run hot. The lead at a quarter of a second, Jeff Gordon. Underneath Kurt Busch, that'll be fifth place. And Jimmy Johnson passing Joey Logano. Well, they've been passing each other back and forth for 11th place. You know, watching Joey Logano in practice on Friday uh, felt like he had a pretty good race car. Qualified at the top 20, but had to go to the rear of the field because of an engine change in this 20 car. And now he's just outside the top 10 and 12. I'm going to have us say, uh, for the lead, here comes Junior. Got a big drive off turn number four. Jamie's stuck on the bottom, and Junior's got up a little bit up the high side, and it's really giving him a lot of momentum, particularly on corner exit. Really making up a lot of time off a of corner. So well, McMurray led 10 laps. The race is back in the hands of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Well, Darrell, what I'm seeing at both ends of the racetrack, it's starting to turn black, all except the very top groove against the wall, right there where Dale Earnhardt Jr. and 88's running. That's where we're starting to get a little bit of rubber down. Thank you. Jeff Gordon is flying and so is the third Henry car. Jimmy Johnson Johnson just passed Carl Edwards for 10th. Jeff Gordon just moved on Denny Hamlin for fourth. And now goes after Rudiman for third. 24 cars really good today. And, uh, started back there in I think 12 spot and he has really worked his way to the front. Got a fast car. Well, and Jeff Gordon at 24, he essentially has four fresh tires. He did it on two different cautions, getting left sides the last time. The uh, trouble on Reed Sorensen reported as an ignition problem that led to smoke in the cockpit. Uh, first race of the year for Sorensen in that number 32, and they have pushed him behind the wall. Sounds like I may have burned up the wiring harness. Out of the race, Dave Blaney, Mike Bliss, Michael McDowell, Joe Nemechek.
and Sorensen behind the wall at 128 laps in the Samsung Mobile 500 Junior out front. Hundred thirty four laps complete Dale Earnhardt Junior trying to check out from the field he has six tenths of a second on his Hendrick Chevy teammate Jeff Gordon and Jamie McMurray you know Dale Earnhardt Junior is paired up against uh, Kyle Busch who's currently in eighth in our direct TV head to head knockout competition money for the driver's charity somebody could win a million dollars my bracket Matt is not looking too good how about you start off our direct TV head to head pit win. Absolutely Mike and it's a stellar matchup of East versus West rivalry Kannapolis versus Las Vegas Dale Jr. versus Kyle Busch both have gone to victory lane here Jr. in Cup and Nationwide Bush just in Nationwide right now Jr. out front pace the field car not bad took two tires the last stop for track position really clean while Kyle Busch they're still trying to work their freeness out of this 18 machine while he runs in the eighth position Krista. Hornish looked like he could be a dark horse, a seven seed, but he had a great qualifying effort. But remember, he was the car that spun to bring out that last caution. So they are currently a lap down. Sam just trying to click off the laps and keep get himself back on the lead lap. Meanwhile, Greg Bibble, a great starting spot as well. But Bibble has been struggling. Right now, he said his car is loose in and plowing. Greg Irwin said that he will get the car a little tighter on the next stop. Remember, Greg Bibble had a great car to start. Jeff Gordon has gone to the lead. He's passed his teammate Dale Earnhardt Jr. They and Tony Stewart have done a lot of swapping back and forth of the lead so far. Back to our uh, direct TV head to head pit whip Dick Bergman. And Mike one of the more interesting matchups for today's race was Casey Kane in the nine car and Brian Newman in the thirty nine car. Kane started in the fifth position currently running in the 20th spot. He like Newman is a past winner here. He won both the pole and the race in 2006. The last race he has won in the Sprint Cup Series however goes back to the fall at Atlanta. Kane struggling with the car all day here in Texas. Newman meanwhile had trouble with his chassis early on. Car was pushing. The crew has worked on it. They've gotten it a lot better. He won here in April 2003 and he is the Series most recent winner, having won last weekend in Phoenix. He started 10th. Three seed Jeff Burton versus number six seed Martin Truex Jr. Burton, a two time winner here, finished ninth in both races a year ago. Started sixth today, but currently 18th. He was adamant about the fact that on lap 111, he was blocked by Jeff Gordon as he attempted to get on pit road. It was a commitment line violation for Jeff Burton. On the other hand, nine cup starts here, four top ten finishes. He started 14th, but he's been moving back, struggling mid-pack right now. He's 22nd. Thanks, Steve. You can follow along and track your bracket at directtv.com slash NASCAR. We know these drivers don't really compete head to head, but this is fun to follow. Some drivers charity is going to win over a quarter million dollars. Some fans going to win a 2010 Roush Mustang and a perfect bracket could win you a million bucks. Well, I'm going to tell you what, while we were doing that pit report right there, Jeff Gordon, we watched him just go by Dale Earnhardt Jr. And this is a battle for third right here between David Rudum and the double zero in Denny Hamlin in the 11 car. These guys been going at each other. And here's ex Tim teammates, Tony Stewart in the 14, Kyle Busch in the 18, battle for 10th right now with Mark Martin in the five coming into the picture. But I was going to say Jeff Gordon right now he's pretty much in his own zip code in that 24 car as he drove by his teammate Adele Earnhardt Jr. And the Gordon fans would say it's about time Jeff has come oh so close to winning what two of the last three races go back to Vegas. OK three dominated. Of the last four, four dominated. Of the last five. Oh, yeah dominated Vegas yes. had the best card seen a guy have in year in a couple of years and didn't wasn't able to win the race. For the moment, Rudiman holds Hamlin. Now they move past Jamie McMurray about six laps ago. Here goes Denny once again. This time he may get it done. On the bottom, if he can slide up right there, he's going to be able to make the pass. That's a the guy behind you has to give you a little bit of room to do that. They swap third place. Meanwhile, McMurray has slipped back to seven. Jeff Gordon, your leader over Dale Earnhardt Jr. now by two seconds.
NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. From the Texas Plains, they carved out and built and blew up <laughs> enough to make a brand new speedway that has become the showplace of the sport. Yes, it snarls traffic, but boy, what a beautiful facility, and it puts on great racing and has since it opened in 1997. Texas Motor Speedway now sees Jeff Gordon leading Dale Earnhardt Jr. by 2.8 seconds. Denny Hamlin six seconds back, as are David Rudiman, Jimmy Johnson. Kurt Busch nine seconds off the lead in sixth. The rest of the top ten, Newman, Edwards, McMurray, and Montoya. Stewart battling back. He's in 11th. And uh, one of the best drives today, Jeff Burton, after that penalty for hitting the cone. Here's Montoya and McMurray for ninth. And here comes Smoke Johnson whipping right through him. Man, I'll say. So Stewart's trying to race his way back to the front where he started the day. And we mentioned Jeff Burton, who had to serve that pit road penalty and restarted 30th. Burton has climbed all the way back to 14th. Now, you know, Mike, looking at our top five, and I was just about to mention uh, the five car could be one of those cars. I think he was actually complaining about a vibration, but for a lot of those guys that stayed out under the last caution, which would include Mark Martin, this is almost a scheduled pit stop, Matt. Larry Mack, he was trying to inch it ever so closer to that window opening. Mark complaining about the car having the vibration. Alan Gubson put it in his hand. He said, we've been ready for you. You have to come whenever you feel like you really need to come. The car had been tight. Left side tires going on. He's away. Well, I would say we're going to see Dale Earnhardt Jr., his teammate in the 88, David Rudum in the double zero, Denny Hamlin in the 11. They should be coming to pit road within the next four to six laps four scheduled green flag stops. These two guys right here, Mike, Larry, they have been going at each other. Rudiman in the double zero and Jimmy Johnson in the 48. I mean, they've been like this right here for a number of laps. Back and forth. And Denny Hamlin has caught them. Some of the drivers that have been struggling. Mark Martin, you saw make a pit stop. Coming through. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Kyle Busch has, has dropped back and continues to fall positions. Uh, he just dropped to 17th. With Casey Kane going past Kyle. Uh, Sam Hornish, we've related Sam's trouble. Sam does, however, uh, he is still on the lead lap, uh, although he's had his woes today and he's still in the top 20. After starting on the outside pole, there's a look at Sam battling Marcus Ambrose off turn four. We're getting a report that they are taking a look at turn one, possibly some debris there. And, yep. you know, we got a lot of guys sweating bullets right now because we have so many different agendas going as far as when the last time some of these cars were on pit road. Among the leaders, Dale Jr., Rudiman, Hamlin, and Bush. Lap 101 was the last time we saw Jr. on pit road. Here he is, 54 laps later, making a stop under green. Pretty much been right on on uh, Q 54 to 58 laps. How about it, Maddie? Absolutely. You could have taken a roll call. So many teams, DW, looking at the tire that came off Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s teammate, Mark Martin. Dale's the car. If anything, was just a tick on the loose side. Good solid stop going on by the 88 guys. What a way for this team to continue. Dale Jr. said it as he roars away. They just feel like each week they make more and more steps getting closer to Victor Lane. Maybe today is that day. Ryan Newman and Jamie McMurray are in, Dick. Well, Newman's car is much better than it has been, Mike. They're going to make some minor adjustments to the car. It's still not perfect the way Newman likes it, but this will give them the chance to do it. The wrench is in the back window. Just a very minor adjustment on Newman's car. Four tires for McMurray. Matt Kenseth is in, two spots ahead of Jamie. As we begin green flag pit stops. And it'll be four tires for Kenseth. Dick. Well, it's a good thing that Kenseth is in right now, Mike. He was really concerned about that right rear tire on his car and said he didn't want to have happen to him what had happened to Vickers, which was an exploded right rear. Joey Logano's had a great day. He started tail end of the field after an engine change, but on each green flag run, he's worked right up through the pack. Here comes Denny Hamlin and David Rudiman and Robbie Gordon. Steve. The double zero is going to pit David Rudiman. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment. Four 
tires as well. He says his car has gotten better. Dick? And Denny Hamlin is in as well for a four-tire change. No worries at all about that left knee today. There isn't even a driver standing by to relieve him. Hamlin positive he's going to run the entire event. Thanks, Dick. Regan Smith is in as we continue under green with Jeff Gordon, the leader over Jimmy Johnson by five and a half seconds. Now this group here, which would include our leader Jeff Gordon in the 24 car, they should be able to go another eight to ten laps. The only car that has not pitted that stayed out the last time is Kurt Busch in the two car right now running in the third position should be on pit road shortly. That two car Larry, you mentioned him. He's getting better and better and better. I've been watching him. He keeps inching forward to front. Clint Boyer was last in at lap 118, but here he is along with Scott Speed in the pit lane and now uh, Kurt Busch will make his appearance on pit road and then as Larry said we should get a break before we have more takers because everyone else last stopped at lap 113. So Boyer getting four tires and here comes Kurt Busch toward Matt. And he brought back the race car. He went to victory lane with Mike back at the Atlanta Motor Speedway sister track of Texas. Easy into his boxes of 33 of Boyer leaves. Now for Bush, he's been on both sides of the fence, tight and loose. You can see they've already completed the chassis adjustment. Also, Steve Addington going to go with a slight air pressure change as well. When he runs the bottom of one and two, he's at least a tenth better. So that's where he's been trying to run the past 10 to 12 laps. Darrell, what, or Larry, what kind of danger do we have right now with a bunch of cars out there on fresh rubber and a bunch more that are going to try to stretch this out another dozen or so laps. I'm glad you mentioned that because Dale Earnhardt Jr. the 88 car is clicking off laps right now around 30 flat. We just saw his teammate Jeff Gordon like the 24 the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. They are almost a second slower right now on their tires than Dale Earnhardt Jr. is with those fresh tires. Well now Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart have come to pit road. Sam Hornish is also in and Greg Biffle. So more of the leaders seeing that give up against the cars with fresh tires are on pit road. Krista. Greg Biffle says he needs his car just a little bit tighter in. So Greg Irwin going to make the change with a little bit of wedge for the 16. Remember they were loose in so he just needs his car a little bit tighter. Matt. Chassis adjustment across the back for the 14 of Tony Stewart. His car is too much on the free side which is what it's been the last few stops a good tear up great grab in that tear up off the windshield. The 18 of Kyle Busch he's been struggling trying to run top 15 most of this race. At one point they said no we're going to try to fix it we'd have to go back to the garage because they might have missed it setup wise but they're not giving up still trying to take stabs at getting this race car the feel that Bush needs significant adjustments on the last stops for the 18 they're going to go for another chassis adjustment again for Bush. Krista. Kevin Harvick has been moving up consistently in fact his car one of the fastest ones out there right now he's saying he's just a little too tight so we're going to make a small adjustment air pressure adjustment for the 29. He loves the tracks where he gets to slide around and stay in the throttle. That's what he's able to do a four tire stop Steve. Well, Krista, Jimmy Johnson of the 48 says, I'm turning that right rear fan off so I can start rolling better. Now, he's also said he's gotten loose on throttle on the bottom because the left rear is wearing out. The 31 of Jeff Burton also on pit road. He has the very first stall off turn four. David Reagan, Paul Menard also stopped. Jeff Martin Truex. Steve. Sorry, Mike. Jeff Gordon also coming in now. He said my car was loose at the start of the run, then all of a sudden it got tight. Steve Latart said, remember, you had mismatched tires. They went two rights, then two lefts. This time it's four. Jeff said we're not very good right now. Tight in the corners, loose getting off. Casey Kane, Jeff Burton have also made stops. Here comes David Gilliland. We're pretty well through this round of green flag stops. Looking for Montoya and uh, Travis Quapple to come to pit road and that will pretty much complete this and Bobby Labonte among our lead lap cars. Now what it's going to be interesting to watch is the 88 car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. who just went by the start finish line. He's actually going off into turn one. Remember pitted 10 laps before Jeff Gordon is where he's going to come out of relationship and it looks like to me he's going to almost have a straightaway on that 24 car by the time Jeff gets up to speed. May have could have had more but he and Scott Speed he could not get around Scott Speed who had just pitted uh, just prior to junior pitting. 
Quapple and Gilliland are on pit road along with Montoya. Krista? Montoya had taken two tires on the last stop. It's a four tire stop. He's saying his car was a lot harder to drive on that run. Max Pappas has made his stop. Brian Vickers, Bill Elliott. And Kevin Conway, that'll complete green flag pit stops. Let's take another look at Jeff Gordon's stop. This so was that last it. stop. We think Daryl may be a little bit of an issue on the left rear. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, you see the the tire changer. He can't get the lug nut off, uh, and he's had to reach in there with his hands and undo them. That took a little bit longer. Doesn't take much. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Denny Hamlin, David Rudiman, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson. We're just past halfway. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. The last 57 laps here in Texas have been run under green, and that has included a pit stop. So Earnhardt stopped at lap 155, Hamlin at 158, Gordon at lap 166. Rudiman stopped with Hamlin. And Jimmy Johnson stopped at lap 165. So still quite a lot of different agendas among the drivers throughout the top 10. We still have 25 cars on the lead lap. Just past halfway with 160 laps to go. Not surprising to see those green flag stops. Remember my FedEx understanding the race. Longest green flag run. Average 96 laps. Almost two complete green flag stops. You know I like what I saw with Dale Jr. from the time we've gotten here guys. We saw him walking up and down pit road with his hat on backwards kind of cutting up and playing around with a lot of guys a little bit more about free spirit that we were used to seeing you know two or three years ago looked like he was really anticipating having a great run today and it's paying off. 175 laps complete Earnhardt Jr. in the lead down to Chris Myers for an AT&T race break. Mike thanks to just a bit more than halfway Dale Earnhardt Jr. is trying to end a 64 race losing streak. We've seen drivers end those skits all of Ryan Newman with Stuart Haas racing. Still have halfway to go. Darrell Walter talked about body language in the past this at least in the races this year it's been little things pit stops speeding on pit road violations that have gotten in the way of at least junior winning a race. No and I, I agree with Darrell when I say he looks like he has got that swagger this weekend that tells you he's got a good race car and at the same time when you look and you see what Lance McGrew and these guys are doing as a as a group at Hendrick Motorsports you, you shouldn't be surprised this car right now is looking like uh, I mean the days of old when junior used to be able to lead races very confidently and right now he's looking very impressive as we watch his teammate the 48 car Jimmy Johnson of having a battle with the double zero David Rudeman he just now went around him for fourth. I want to talk about uh, certainly Jeff Gordon who's had some frustration finishing third and second in the last two races on those green white checker finishes currently running second and Denny Hamlin just went ahead in front of Denny Hamlin who's running third. Yeah, he's definitely had. I got the fastest race car right at the moment, realizing that Dale Hart Jr. stopped earlier than Jeff did. But Jeff didn't have the greatest pit stop in the world either on that last round of green flag stops. Cost him a lot of racetrack, but right now he's starting to, you know, inch his way back closer to Dale Hart Jr. He is the fastest car on the track, uh, along with his teammate Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, Jeff, Tony Stewart's led the most laps in this race, the pole sitter. This is his 400th career start. Can Stewart Haas win consecutive races? Tony won four last season. Newman won for the first time ever with Stewart. Haas last week. I think he's got an excellent chance. We've seen how fast he is. The pit crew's been very solid all day long. Right now they're a little bit out of sequence with everybody else. One caution flag I think will catch all these guys right back up. And Tony Stewart will definitely be in the hunt. And we talked about Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading for the first time since the Daytona 500. Jamie McMurray, Daytona 500 winner, had led earlier in this race for the first time. He only led for 10 laps, but he's hanging in there in the top 10. Yeah, this style of racetrack, you got to remember, Jamie McMurray won his first. Uh, NASCAR race as far as Sprint Cup's concerned driving for Chip Ganassi at Charlotte Motor Speedway. So this racetrack is very very similar. We see another great battle, battle for here. third here. Battle for third right here between Denny Hamlin who's having a strong. Whoa Jimmy Johnson said, we got to go. Boy. <laughs> get out of the way. He's talking about Kevin Conway in that 38 car. You need to get out of my way. I'm coming. You see that 30 48 car. See how strong he is. Yeah. He runs right up on the back bumper of that 11. And here's a battle for the lead guys. <laughs> teammates versus teammates. 24 versus the 88. And the the, uh, the Hendrick team Jimmy Johnson winning a lot of races but there are two guys that want their share want to get in victory lane as Jeff Gordon has the lead on lap 182 over Dale Earnhardt Jr. And by the way Kurt Busch currently running sixth has led the most laps 
of all drivers of this year coming into the race. You can text your opinion on who you think is going to win the AT&T Fastest Pit Crew of the Year Award. We'll match it up with Jeff's selection. The AT&T Fastest Pit Crew of the Year Award delivered by AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. Let's rejoin Daryl, Larry, and Mike as the battle continues. Jimmy Johnson is on. He's on a rage. He's going to go around Denny Hamlin. But Daryl, that bump that he gave a Kevin Conway. I've heard you say all you expect of the lap car is to be consistent, stay in the same groove. If you're going to run the bottom, stay on the bottom. You're going to run the top, stay on the top. Was Conway just trying to get out of the way and have nowhere else to go? I think what happens is when you're a rookie, you're focusing so hard on the line you're running around the racetrack, you forget that are people that are coming up on you much, much faster than you are. So it, it's one of those things that Jimmy will probably might even speak to Kevin Conway about. Look, dude, when you're getting past, pick a lane. In a mirror of battle between two of the children's Chevys, Jeff Burton goes to 11th. Remember the penalty he served for knocking over the pit line, uh, pit road commitment cone. Big Daddy back out front, carrying the special forces colors this week. Jeff Gordon leads in Texas. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Napa. Napa know-how by Amp Energy. Go to AmpUpThe88.com this Wednesday, April 21st to chat live with crew chief Lance McGrew. And by Chevy. Every model is backed by a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. 190 laps complete as Sprint brings an inside look. It's what's happening now inside the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Denny Hamlin right there. The point leader at the moment would be Jimmy Johnson by 108 over Matt Kenseth. The way they're running right now with Jeff Gordon third, Greg Biffle fourth. And the biggest mover in this race is Denny Hamlin up 25 positions from his official starting spot. For more, check out NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile at Sprint.com slash speed. Paul Menard continues to have the good runs that characterized the first six races of his season. Yeah, they, they stumbled a little bit last week at Phoenix, but, you know, going into Phoenix, they were up there in the top 12 in points. And uh, this group just continues to be solid. We sat down with Paul Menard last week, and he said, you know, it's been a combination of things. Obviously, Slugger Labby coming on board as the crew chief has made a huge difference. But he just said also just the camaraderie, I think, between the four teams. But, Dick, they right on track with this car today, it looks like. Absolutely right, Larry, when you say this car, because the car Menard is driving today is the same one in which he finished fifth with earlier this year in Atlanta. And they have done a lot of work over the course of the offseason to put Menard in position for top five finishes. Eleven new cars were built. The crew was built out of four teams that had shut down. Crew chief Slugger Lobby simply picked the best person for each position out of all four of those teams. So new cars, new attitude, new people. It's working for Menard. Got two guys that I, I just see an entirely different attitude this year over last year. Menard for one and Joey Logano for the other. Just to, they exude confidence that they did not have uh, a year ago and it's showing up in performance as well. You know back to Paul Menard we always like to talk about these guys above and beyond the racetrack has a goal of skiing snow skiing in every continent in the world right now he's still got six to go he's only done it in the U.S. Menard skiing his way past uh, Kevin Harvick. 11th and 12th Jeff Gordon holds a lead of 1.7 seconds over Jimmy Johnson. You know it took Jeff forever to win here at Texas. But Steve he had Great six right there man that was a good one. Gordon had six top five finishes here before he finally got his first Texas win last April. And he's out front now Mike now before the last stop Jeff said I'm tight getting into the corners and I'm loose off. Well they have fixed that tight end and that's helped him a lot. He said I'm really good in one and two still just a little loose coming off three and four. 
Right now, just looking at the scoring monitor, Steve, it just looks like the only car that can keep tempo with him is the guy that's right behind him, his teammate, Jimmy Johnson, about a second and a half back. Both those guys in the 30, 40s, and 50s, closest thing to them, 60s and 70s. This track, when you exit turn two, it's a little tighter. It's a little tighter turn up off of two, and it causes you a little bit of a problem over there. Then turn four, it kind of opens up. It's a sweeper, and so you get a lot of speed on corner exit. That's why you get a little bit loose as you come out of turn four. Ninth place, Montoya's been running that high line most all day. Jeff Burton running where the car is comfortable and overcoming a pit road penalty has fought his way back into the top 10 in the 31. And you know the thing about it, a lot of the guys that were early comers on that last green flag pit stop, like Mark Martin, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jamie McMurray, Kenseth and Newman, within about 8 to 12 laps, we're going to see another set of green flag pit stops start. Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson can go about 10 more laps than third place Dale Earnhardt Jr., Denny Hamlin, and David Rudiman. It should get interesting. Look at this log jam. <laughs> Matt Kenseth in the 17 and Sam Hornish are trying to keep from going one lap down. Jeff Gordon got a little frustrated with him, and that brought Jimmy Johnson right there, right to them, and to the lead. Here comes Gordon back. And they still have not been able to lap the 17 or the 77. But they will be. That, that 48 is much, much quicker around the top of this racetrack than what Gordon was able to do. Gordon couldn't get up there and make the pass. Oh, nice. But yeah, desperate people are doing desperate things, and that would be the 77 of Hornish, the 17 of Kenseth, trying to stay on the lead lap. Now they put Kenseth in the 17 down a lap. Yeah, and you know what Jeff Gordon's saying, don't you? Why wouldn't they do that for me? And here comes the 88 to pit road. Well, he was the first of the leaders to be on pit road during the last sequence. So that will repeat itself here at lap 206 with 128 laps to go. And probably two more stops. Meanwhile, well, watch this. So this isn't over with yet. Sam Hornish is giving Jimmy Johnson in a 48 and that 24. He's giving him a fight, man. And let's cover the Earnhardt stop. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. said I need to be a little bit tighter over the course of the run. Two clear near the end. Left side's going on and he's away. Nick. Just in right now, just as soon as he went a lap down, crew chief Todd Parrott decided it was time to bring him in right away for four fresh ones. This chassis simply has not been where Kenson wanted it all day long. Biggest problem, bounce the noise off the race drive. Mark Martin will peel off to pit road as we begin this round of green flag stops. We've been under green since lap 117. That's uh, coming up on two full rounds of green flag pit stops. Yeah, Mark Martin was one of the first cars to hit pit road. The last set of green stops, remember, he thought he had a vibration. I would say the next one we'll see is McMurray in the one and Newman in the 39. Matt. 208 is when they expected Mark to hit his stall. That's exactly what he did. You can already see the chassis adjustment significant one already completed. He was really loose at the beginning of that run. Now he says neutral. Today. Ryan Newman on his way down pit road. The crew is going to be making an adjustment on the car. Newman said, says. For the lead, Jeff Gordon comes right back after Jimmy Johnson. Jeff Gordon got passed by Jimmy Johnson because Jeff wasn't aggressive enough trying to get through that lap traffic. Jimmy caught him, was able to slip by on the high side, but I think you can see how good those two cars are. Actually pushing Jeff Gordon down the front straightaway. That will make Jeff Gordon very unhappy. Now on the last run, they came in one lap apart. Johnson one lap before Gordon. We'll see how this plays out. You'd never know these two are teammates, Daryl, the way they're going at each other right now. No, sir. They lay, they lay it to each other just like they're, uh, they don't know each other. David Rudiman stopped. Kevin Harvick is in. Robbie Gordon on pit road. Joey Logano and Ryan Newman coming in for their stops along with Regan Smith. Second consecutive round of green flag stops underway. Yeah, you know those, those two cars there, the 24 and the 48, Gordon Johnson should be able to run another 10 laps at least. Krista. Kevin Harvick is in, and it's about five laps earlier than they planned, but his car was getting really tight. You saw the wrench go in. That's the first time a wrench has been in the car all day long, all air pressure prior to this. Dick? Ryan Newman in his pit, very much angled in his pit, slow stop on the left rear, trouble on that corner of the car. 
Joey Logano in and out. Same with Regan Smith. And for the moment, Pit Road is quiet. Gordon half a second over Johnson now. As Jimmy Johnson is going to have to deal with Denny Hamlin for second place. You know, I think that Jeff Gordon gets a big, big thrill out of being able to lead Jimmy Johnson around a racetrack. The way Jimmy is a success he's had. Hamlin coming underneath Bill Elliott. Trying to move up. As Brian Vickers and Greg Biffle come to pit road, Krista. Yeah, and Greg Biffle just trying to get that track position that they had earlier in the race. The race car has been better. Remember, they made it just a little bit tighter in on the last stop. You see Biffle come to a stop for his crew to make the changes there around on the right side. It's just air pressure adjustment right now for the 16 as they go to work over for a four tire stop. Clint Boyer is the second of the Childress cars to hit pit road as Jeff Gordon continues to log laps. Now what we've got here, we've got 121 laps to go. For these guys that had to make these green flag stops early in this sequence, it's going to be tough making this race on one more stop. But when I look at cars like this 24 car of Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin, those guys like that, they may be able to stretch this thing out and make this race on one more stop. Sam Hornish had one spin to bring out a caution earlier. Now he's in. Krista? Yeah, his race car started this race really tight, but they've been making small adjustments since that spin to get back where they need to be. You see another adjustment being made on the 77 as they come around for four tires. Sam Hornish had anticipated it would be a little bit tight here in this race. Back. Carl Edwards winless in 2009. His last win goes back to Homestead. The last race, 2008, 43 races ago. Expected chassis adjustment in the back window. You can see it being completed now. Tear off off the windshield. Edwards on the last stop made a track bar adjustment. The car was just too free. They went down on the last stop. A little bit of trouble, and he's away. Martin Truex, Casey Kane, Paul Menard, and Elliot Sadler on pit road at lap 216. You know, sometimes, Larry, I know you talk about staying out on old tires, but if you run these races backwards, like most of these crew chiefs do, sometimes there's a point in a race when you've got to stay out on old tires a little bit longer than you'd like to. Well, I think this stop here in particular, because like I say, it's putting them almost in a one-stop window. Dick. Hamlin is in right now. They're going to make a minor adjustment to this car. The car has been strong all day, but not the sharpest car in the field all day. So they're hopeful that this adjustment is going to put them in the position that they want to be. Steve. Jimmy Johnson heads down pit road. Now his car has gone to the tight side. He said it's tight off turns two and four. He's getting a chassis adjustment, and it's gotten a little bit tight going into one. Four tires for Jimmy Johnson. Matt Yoakum. And the 18 of Kyle Busch is in. They've already completed some adjustments for him. His car just extreme on the loose side. He's away, waiting for his brother, Kurt Busch, to make his way to his pit stall. Tale of two races. Earlier on, you heard Steve Edmonds say they've been dealing with a tight car. Now it's extremely on the loose side. In fact, he said, I am just burning that right rear. It is on fire. Meanwhile, the 14 is Stewart's in. Track bar adjustment already completed for Stewart. Had a lot of success here in Texas. Looking for more here today from the pole. Steve. Matt Jeff Gordon just finished his service. He said his car was just too free. At the start of a run, they made a wedge adjustment for Jeff Gordon. Montoya is in along with Vickers and Jeff Burton getting service. Krista? Juan Montoya describes himself as intensive, competitive, but realistic. Is a win realistic today for the 42? Absolutely. Right now, his race car just a little bit tight in the center. An air pressure adjustment to fix that. You know, Larry, if the 24 car loses a lot of ground to the 48, I know why. The 48 came to pit road smoking all four tires, Jimmy Johnson did. Jeff Gordon coasted into pit road. And you see right there, that's about how much difference. That's a pass for the lead right there. And the 48 did every bit of that on and off pit road. 88, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is actually the leader because he got advantage of those fresh tires a little bit quicker. But I don't think Dale Earnhardt Jr. can make it on one more stop. 24 and a 48, Johnson and Gordon possibly. The plot thickens with 115 laps to go. 300 cars out front, Earnhardt, Johnson, and Gordon. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Verizon Wireless. Big racing fan? Get Verizon Championship Racing for race highlights, behind the scenes, and exclusive interviews right on your VCAST phone. From the network with the most 3G coverage, Verizon.
1997 Jeff Burton driving a Jack Roush Ford earns his first victory in what's now the Sprint Cup Series at the first ever Sprint Cup race at Texas Motor Speedway. We have got a great fight for the lead Boy. as Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson keep trading it back and forth. I've got the feeling after several near misses Jeff Gordon has just decided today he is not going to be denied by that 48 car. Oh yeah but as this race winds down Jeff Gordon's going to start saying just like he did in Vegas. Has he got anything left. Well, we know we're going to have at least one more pit stop but the thing about it all the racing they've been doing just look at some of the cars they just put a lap down. They just put their teammate Mark Martin in the five lap down and just put last week's winner from Phoenix Ryan Newman in that 39 Army car lap down. These two cars are pretty much in a league of their own right now. Dale Jr's a close but the 48 with Johnson and 24 with Gordon. They able, they're able to stretch it out pretty good on everybody else. Yeah, that puts 18 cars on the lead lap with just a little over 100 laps to go. But look, Gordon has really stretched it out on that 48 of Johnson now. Steve? Mike, the issue for Jimmy Johnson, he just told Chad Canals twice, I'm getting tighter getting in, tighter getting in. And, and the only thing you can do when you're tight getting in like that is roll out the throttle early. Because if you charge the corner, the car will just push. The front tires won't grip. You just go right up the hill and it kills your lap time. So roll out early and do what you can do. Johnson second. Here's Dale Earnhardt Jr. running in third. Matt. Right before that last stop, Jr. said that he needed to be tighter. They made adjustments. And then Jr. after the stop, about five laps went by, he said, we are already too loose early on in this run. So it's a condition. You can see a little bobble there, a little condition. They're going to continue to chase until their next stop. Opposite problem for what his teammate Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson, his car is not responding to the steering wheel getting in the corner. Dale Earnhardt Jr., the 88, the back end's coming out loose getting in the corner. So you turn the blower off. You see a, the 11 car here with Denny Hamlin, the FedEx car. You, you, you turn the right front blower off. Let that tire build up a little more air pressure. It's like putting wedge in the car. It's like tightening the car up, but letting the tire do it. That should help that. Another three seconds back. Finds David Rudiman in the double zero for Michael Waltrip racing in fifth place. Now our pole sitter Tony Stewart in that 14 car making his 400th career start today. The good news is solidly in the top 10 and six. The bad news a half a lap down to leader Jeff Gordon in the 24. Started from the pole for the first time in four years. In seventh, Paul Menard continues to impress in the uh, Menards Ford with all of his family's success in open wheel, particularly IndyCar racing. Paul has driven an IndyCar only once. He tested at Pikes Peak, said that's enough of that. Montoya has been in the wall in turn two. I don't see any tires now. Caution is out. He left a long black stripe beginning at the Whelan billboard all the way over to the turn two condo up on the wall. Huge break for Joy Logano, Matt Kenseth, Kevin Harvick. In fact, Matt Kenseth, who went a lap down a while ago because they pitted early, got advantage of those fresh tires. They're back on the lead lap. Looks like a right rear. 45 in front, same out back. Let's see if we hear anything. <laughs> So that will pretty much end the sequence of off cycle pit stops as the caution flies for the fifth time today for Montoya. Ryan Newman last week's winner in Phoenix will receive the free pass and get back on the lead lap. This will put everyone with about 100 laps to go in a one stop window easily to make it to the end of this race. It's also going to change the complexion of this race considerably because now issues can be resolved before we go into this last little run here. And I think we've been saying this for 10 years. Cautions breed cautions, especially in the last third of the race. I've seen that. <laughs> I've seen that. Well, Jeff Gordon's lead is erased over Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Denny Hamlin and David Rudiman. Hamlin, the first Toyota in the race. The first Ford is Paul Menard in seventh. And the first Dodge is Kurt Busch in tenth. 
pit road will be open and yes they have a new commitment cone out there let's hope nobody gets to that Steve Burns listening to the Hendrick Motorsports teammates Jimmy Johnson says the chassis was freer on entry but still too tight Jeff Gordon his teammate says we're loose on early entry we're loose on late exit but we're good four tires for both of those teams Dick the Hamlin pits out of the fourth position crew chief Mike Ford called for a very small adjustment Hamlin asked for a smaller adjustment still concerned about the right front blistering Matt Dale Earnhardt Jr. said, I am wrecking on the bottom. I'm wrecking pretty much everywhere on the racetrack. Track bar adjustment. Also, Lance McGrew would try to tighten him up with an air pressure change again for the third straight stop. Lengthy stop. He loses a few spots on pit road. I want you to see how Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Burton came all the way down pit road side by side. Burton gained five spots, but he just didn't want to inch up past Johnson. Didn't want to get caught by the speeding police. I don't like that two tire strategy this late in a race. No, sir. Two hundred thirty six laps complete. We're getting ready to go back to green. It's a one pit stop race. We mentioned before we went to commercial here comes Jimmy Johnson out of his box Jeff Burton coming along the pit road speed is timed electronically every car is timed. Jeff Burton got that close and was unwilling to push it one more foot to gain the spot because he knew if he did he'd get gigged for speeding. Now the question of two versus four tires was raised in every pit up and down pit road including Jeff Gordon's. The 14 took two and one. Stand for it. No, four was the way to go. Kevin brought it up. There was a lot of lap cars between us and like fourth and fifth. Just like we talked about after Vegas, you know what I mean? Even if they all took right, there are only a couple going to beat us. So these four tires are going to be what we need. 20 cars on the lead lap as we get set for the restart. Four, two, none. Gordon Stewart Bruton, uh, Burton. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson Dale Earnhardt Jr. How about this for a Monday 90,000 people is the estimated crowd at Texas they would have had about 170,000 had we been able to run yesterday 97 laps to go let's crank it up for the restart. Johnson 24 Jeff Gordon they are after each other you wouldn't know their teammates today would you Larry no but it looks like the 48 a little better getting in the corner when he runs the high line he can hold his ground on the exit 24 cars are not going quite as deep Jeff Gordon as that 48 cars going in the corner 48 a little tight getting in you can drive it in a little bit harder if it'll stick but look at the aggression and the drive shown by Jeff Gordon Whoa, they hit I'm this, telling you the, I don't know if he has the best car but Jeff Gordon has the drive to win this race uh, they remember they came out here a little bit ago pushing each other that time they bounced off each other and you know what I love it I love Jeff Gordon showing his kind of aggression in that 24 car don't back down to nobody. Well, did you see that piece we did in the pre-race show yesterday where he was out playing with the military? I think he got a little bit of aggression going on. Now Jimmy Johnson's got a left front tire rub. That is trouble. Burton behind him, then Biffle. We'll take a look for some tire smoke there. Kurt Busch and Hamlin. Hamlin's yes. going to fall to Carl Edwards, then Kyle Busch. Jimmy Johnson cannot mess around with that left front tire rub. You see that Jeff got up under him, got him loose. <laughs> and Jimmy Johnson tried to come back down into the side of the 48. I don't think it was intentional. And also on that restart, Kyle Busch 
and Paul Menard uh, roughed up each other in turn number two. Menard's dropped back a little bit. There's his bright yellow green car. But Daryl, that's classic Texas Motor Speedway. It narrows up so much on the exit of turn four. It really does. I'm just a little bit concerned about Jimmy Johnson's left front tire rub, though. I've seen that blow out a left front tire. Well, you might have to explain all this to Tony Stewart in post race because he is running away. Stewart quickly opens up 1.3 seconds on Jeff Gordon. Johnson, Burton, and Biffle, the top five. Kurt Busch, Hamlin, Rudiman, Earnhardt, and Kenseth. If this ten. goes like it's been going, though, Mike, this, this situation with Tony Stewart, that's a short term gain. And, Je and, and Jeff Gordon in the 24, that's a long term gain. How about Jeff Burton out there with no fresh tires? They gained five spots on pit road, and so far, since the restart, Burton's held his own in fourth. Pretty impressed because he did have 15 laps on those tires, but remember, they've been trying to overcome that penalty that they got way back in the race, way back on lap 111 when he had the commitment cone violation, had to go to the tail end of the longest line. Steve? Jimmy Johnson just said, I've got my hands full. I think I have damage to the left front fender. He well, does, Steve. We see it rubbing. Uh, got a big dent in it. Well, the left front fender is one of the most critical parts of that race car from an aerodynamic standpoint. When you break up the shape of that left front fender, it totally hurts the way the car turns. And now he's falling into the clutches of that 31 car of Jeff Burton. I'm not so much worried about the aerodynamics. I know that's important, but I just don't like that left front rubbing very long. That tire is always being pulled out into that fender. Plus, you have somebody drive around you who's on old tires. And you can see that Jimmy is either pedaling it a bit or just trying to sort out what the problem is and how bad it is. Steve? Interesting in car audio from driver Jim Gordon in the 24 car after contact with his teammate Jimmy Johnson. You talked about how badly he wants to win after getting shoved around the last two weeks. Even if they all took right, there only a couple are going to beat us. These four tires are going to be what we need. <laughs> Well, I agree on the four tires. I just, I'm like Daryl. I, I think the two tires with Tony Stewart, with Greg Biffle, even with Jeff Burton not changing any, is totally a short term game. I apologize. We had a technical issue there. Trying to hear Steve Letarte. And here, Casey Kane with Montoya at 14th place. Go back up on that pressure, maybe a quarter pound the other way. Well, and Casey Kane in that nine qualified in the fifth position, and they have really struggled with this car since the beginning of the race. And remember Montoya, who's in 15th right now in the 42, brought the last caution out just a few laps ago. And you know, a lot of times you look at a track like this, you compare it to Atlanta, Charlotte. Casey Kane had a great car at Atlanta. I thought more, we'd get more out of him today than we have. NASCAR's Fred Cup Racing on Fox is delivered by UPS. Log on to UPS.com slash racing to enter the UPS $100,000 Trackside Challenge. Aerial coverage brought to you by DirecTV. DirecTV, it'll change your life. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. 79 laps to go. We have a new leader. Jeff Gordon on four tires ran down Tony Stewart's number 14, caught him, and quickly passed him. And a couple things to clear up first when Jeff Burton made his pit stop he did not get no tires as the graphic showed and we've been saying we've confirmed that he did get two tires it was a two tire stop for Burton not a no tire stop and here is the audio between Steve Letard and Jeff Gordon that Steve Burns was trying to lead to talking about that collision with Jimmy Johnson. Four times a little upset. I guess they thought you got into him I guess. Hi. Treated different than everybody else. That's the kind of teammate I want, buddy. <laughs> but I'm glad we played that audio because I read an article back during the offseason that Jeff Gordon, you could read that article, and he stated, you know what? I've about had enough of this 48 car dominating our sport. And that's a that's his teammate, and that's a car that he's actually listed as the owner. But remember, Jeff Gordon, even though he's won four championships, he hadn't seen the likes of a championship since that 48 car started in 2002. Just remember, this race is not over. 
And who's the best closer in the sport? That would be the car on your screen. That guy. That guy right there. Look at this. One, two finishes. These two drivers have had 10 one, two finishes. Gordon won six. Jimmy four so far. The record for one, two finishes in NASCAR. Richard Petty, David Pearson. 62 one, two finishes. David won 33 of them. Richard, 29. Pretty evenly matched there. Oh, and by the way, if you've been with us for the last three hours, Rick Hendricks' first win in what's now the Sprint Cup Series came in the car number five with Jeff Bodine driving at Martinsville. Martinsville, Virginia. About two hours ago, we promised that answer. Well, there it is. Now we're caught up. Tony Stewart in second place, one second off the lead. Jeff Burton, with two tires on the last stop, has overcome that pit road penalty, running a strong third. Jimmy Johnson in fourth, four seconds off the lead. And I think our fifth place car, Denny Hamlin, the highest running Toyota right now, and that 11 car running fifth, I, I think this just will really help him and help this race team to have this kind of a run today. Remember, less than three weeks ago, had knee surgery. That's a battle for position right there between Greg Biffle in the 16 and David Rudeman in the double zero. Ruderman has been hanging around Larry the top 10 all race long and I think that's a battle of two tires on the 16 of Biffle four fresh tires on the double zero of Ruderman Biffle the best forward in the race Kurt Busch the highest dodge in eighth place in the Blue Deuce and Dale Earnhardt Jr. who led 45 laps earlier today and then saw the handle kind of go away right now running in ninth nine seconds off the lead yeah nine seconds behind but he's running the same lap times as Jeff Gordon right now but he'll need a caution Matt Kenseth 10th his laps are about not quite two tenths off of Jeff Gordon's and that's great strategy Larry on the 17 part Carl Edwards that's the third of the Roush cars Roush Fenway cars in 11th place three time winner here Jamie McMurray's been hanging around the top 10 all day and led 10 laps of this race McMurray is in 12 and that's a beautiful thing about the wave around you know now you make a pit stop you come back out a caution flag normally you would have been a pin to lap down or on the tail end of the lead lap in most cases now you get the wave around you may have a couple extra laps on your tires but you're still on the lead lap Montoya passes Kyle Busch that's 13th place about uh, a little more than not quite half a lap behind the leaders but they have goes by Casey Kane for 50. They have made that 18 car a little bit better because they started off running right up near the front. Kyle Busch, I'm talking about, he fell way back, almost outside the top 20. Now they've kind of worked their way back up in there. Hey, they were talking about taking that car to the garage and working on it, that they had missed the setup. So pretty nice recovery. A little three-way battle here as Kurt Busch has gone to seventh. Biffle on the outside of Earnhardt for eighth. And we talked about Greg Biffle in that 16 car paying the price for two tires. And I know that's the same strategy as Tony Stewart in the 14, Burton in the 31. To pull off two tires, if you get a lot of laps going green, you have to have a pretty balanced, a good handling race car to make it work. Krista? Well, before that stop, Greg Biffle told his crew, take a half round of wedge out of this car and we will go to the front. So they did. The crew took the wedge out and he did. Got to the front. But was that because of the adjustment or that two tire stop? Because right now he's trying to hang on like a wild bucking Bronco in Texas. This car is loose. Now he just had a long slide off turn four, trying to get back to the rear bumper of Dale Jr. Uh, without much success. The rest of the lead lap cars, Kevin Harvick in 17th, Joey Logano, Ryan Newman. And A.J. Allmendinger. Everybody else is one or more laps down. Jeff Gordon out front with 68 laps to go in the Samsung Mobile 500. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by NAS High Performance Energy Drink. Drink NAS Fuel Victory by AT&T. Rethink Possible. And by the all-new 2011 Super Duty Built for Tough. 62 laps to go at Texas. Jeff Gordon leads. Let's check in on the 48 team with Steve Burns. Chris lap 272. Flat left front tire for the 48. Flat left front tire for Jimmy Johnson. They're going to take four tires. You wonder if it had something to do with what happened earlier when Jeff Gordon went toe-to-toe -to -toe with 
his teammates Jeff Gordon currently our leader working on leading his 90th lap followed by Tony Stewart and Jeff Burton. Yeah he's right on the outside edge of maybe being his last stop but yes definitely I think the damage on that left front was caused because of the 24 whenever they're trying to pass you see Jeff Gordon get on the inside of Jimmy get him a little bit loose up off the corner he dives to the inside of him. Jimmy cuts back hard contact as far as the those two cars are concerned and you start to see the left front start to smoke on the 48. It clearly rubbed the sidewall to the point it made it fail. That was with 94 laps to go. And as you heard Jeff Gordon on the radio, hey, like any other driver and Steve Letard has said, we're going to go after whether it's 48 or whoever we want to win the race. If you want to text your fastest pit crew to 2258 delivered by AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network, you can. Matt Kenseth of the 17 crew had the best time last time. But Jeff, how are you ranking him today? Right now, Jimmy Johnson's crew has been doing really well, along with Jeff Gordon. They've had some ups and downs, but also the Tony Stewart crew. They've been phenomenal all day long. It's been one year, Mike, since Jeff Gordon has won a cup race. So he is leading here, and that is our AT&T race break. Thanks, Chris. In fact, Gordon's last two wins have come on mile-and-a-half speedways. As you said, Texas last April, and then Charlotte in November of 2007. That tire lasted a lot longer than I thought it would. I mean, that, tire, that fender was working on that tire. Here's the other thing, Larry. Probably couldn't have come at a worse time because he's not quite in his pit window. Yeah, Jeff Hammond talked about that. He had to make that stop with 62 laps to go. We're now just barely, I think, what's inside of the fuel window where stopping now could get you to the end. However, Jimmy Johnson is the first car one lap down. If a caution comes out, he gets the free pass. He's right back on sequence with everybody else, but he would be at the tail end of the line. Sprint gives you an inside look at what's happening now inside the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Riding with Joey Logano because uh, he started out back and he's the biggest mover in this race. 25 positions up to 17 for the Connecticut driver. Denny Hamlin also has improved 25 spots and Dale Earnhardt Jr. running the fastest laps at the moment. For more check out NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile. Yeah at sprint.com slash speed. Tell you that boy right there is having him a good day Larry. David Rudiman in a double zero car. He's up to fifth place right now. And that car is solid as a rock. Good run for Rudiman. But when you think about David Rudiman where is he normally the strongest the mile and a half racetracks. That's where he won his race at Charlotte Motor Speedway last spring. 10 or so laps from the next round of green flag pit stops. Can Jeff Gordon stay out front? Stay tuned. Jamie McMurray made a pit stop out of 16th place. Martin Truex came in along with Keselowski. And here is Montoya, who was 12th when he came to pit road for what he hopes will be the final stop of the day. And I think you'll see a lot of these guys with the exception of Jeff Gordon maybe Tony Stewart some of the guys at the front I think you'll see them do the short pitting trying to gain as much advantage as they can with the fresh tires. I know that the 24 is our leader Larry but he struggles getting through traffic. There's a number of cars that have held him up a good bit and the 31's in Burns. DW he says he's not rolling the middle good at all. He says I'm still loose. He's wanted more grip the entire but as you said, lap 111, he had trouble on pit road. He's battled back. Dick. Kens is a little bit tight, a little bit loose, just arrives in his pit stall now. The crew going to make a minor chassis adjustment in the back of the car. Steve. Jeff Gordon in the 24 hits pit road, Dick. He says, my exit is really good. I'm just still a little bit tight on entry. They're going to make a small air pressure adjustment, half pound out of the right front to help the 24 car when it lands. And Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s crew up on the wall waiting for the 88 for what should be their final scheduled pit stop. Jr. rolls to a stop still trying to find that balance. Lance McGrew one last shot going for a wedge adjustment. And the 14 of Tony Stewart who will be pitting directly in front of Dale Jr. on pit road as well. Stewart's complaint his car was free as well from the center to exit. One option they were throwing around air pressure 
adjustment for sure for the 14 of Stewart. As he dives into his pit stop, let's see if they go for a chassis adjustment as well. Dick? Danny Hamlin with another wider chassis adjustment in the back of the car, mostly free. Menard right in front of him, so it's a big turn to get out of his pit for Hamlin. Harvick's been in, Kyle Busch, David Reagan, David Rudiman, all making pit stops at lap 287. Kurt Busch in. A lot of green flag runs today. I think more than we've seen in the entire season. Certainly more green flag stops. This is the third round. But this is exactly what FedEx understand in the race. The trends of the pattern showed us about Texas Motor Speedway. Now it looks like Jimmy Johnson, the 48 car, since Kurt Busch pitted, he will be the leader. Matt? Kurt, Kurt Busch slides to a stop almost to the white line. You can see they took the air gun, blew that dust out. A lot of brake being used here at Texas. Most of the car has been like on a razor blade, either extremely loose or tight. The last run, it was both. Air pressure adjustments all the way around for both. Jimmy Johnson holds the lead. Jeff Gordon coming on fresh tires. They're in the same corner. That's right. That would be NFL. Not for long. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure what that was going to mean. But yeah, Jimmy Johnson's got two situations. He's got a rearview mirror full of his teammate, Jeff Gordon, in the 24. And I don't think the 48 can make it to the end, pitted with 62 to go. And there goes Gordon straight to the bottom of the racetrack. A decisive move to the bottom for Jeff Gordon. Drag race down the back straightaway. Johnson's not going to give it up easy. Johnson floats the high side. Gordon underneath. Can he seal the deal coming off four? Oh, yeah. Yes. No contest. Now, while these guys are going at it, it's about five and a half seconds back to Tony Stewart in that 14 car in third. Jeff Gordon's led over 100 laps today. The last nine times he did that resulted in just one victory. And that was the race here last year. That 24 car is. It, yeah, it's hooked up better than I've seen it since Vegas really thought he had an awesome car at Vegas really nice looking car today. You know the pit crews practice every week. Maybe we ought to send Jeff out with the special forces every week man. Wow. He's on a tear. The test drone is flowing. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. By Subway Restaurants, enjoy so many $5 footlong subs all day, every day, only at Subway. And by Viagra. 38 laps to go north of Fort Worth, and the 3-4-5 battle has been a great one. Jeff Burton just went past Tony Stewart. That opened the door for the 11 of Hamlin, and the pole sitter falls from third to fifth. Yeah, Tony Stewart in the 14s had a good car all day long, but it's been more the short run car versus the long run, I believe. Kurt Busch, Juan Montoya, and the 99 of Carl Edwards, 11, 12, 13, and Kyle Busch, 14. They've done a nice job on the 18 car today, uh, getting that thing even back in contention at all. I mean, they've done a really nice job adjusting it up and helping him out. Now you know a guy that has made his way into the top 10 just in front of this group right here AJ Allmendinger in that 43 car he's running 10th right now. I think the problem with this car he was on pit road the exact time that the 48 car Jimmy Johnson was there may be a little short of making it to the end. We'll have to run 62 laps to make it to the finish. And Larry what do we always say never say never. 1-2, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, 3.2 seconds between them. Steve Letart versus Chad Knaus. And here's Tony Stewart falling victim to Dale Earnhardt Jr. Stewart drops to sixth. Yeah, the problem Dale Earnhardt Jr. has faced is, is because I, I think he was off sequence with like Jeff Gordon so many times during those green flag stops as he's eight seconds behind he will have to have a caution I think to get caught back up. Let's go down to Steve Burns on the leaders. Well Daryl you said never say never but I asked Ron Malik the car chief on the 48 and just held up a sign Do you have to stop again for fuel. He has nodded his head. Well, and what I see, Steve, is is they've not slowed him down any. You know, they're going ahead full bore. In fact, he's running about the same lap times as his teammate Jeff Gordon in the 24. So they're they're planning on stopping if we don't get a caution. 
Jeff Gordon puts uh, the Phoenix winner Ryan Newman down a lap. But Larry what do your trends say about late race cautions here. Well my FedEx understanding the race says average lap 30. My 2010 understanding the race says within the last 10 laps. <laughs> okay. Yeah the, the, these races as we know the leader with 10 laps to go in the last four races has not won. So uh, anything can happen with these new uh, green white checkered and a double file restart. Gordon there's Johnson that's first to second and it's another three seconds back to Jeff Burton in third. There's Burton's black and yellow number 31 the cat car. Those first four cars are the 36 38 40 and a 24 on Hamlin Hamlin actually is the fastest car right now of the first four. Denny looks like he's the one of them that can hang the bottom Daryl in every corner. Yeah he does his car is sticking on the bottom of the left front tire right on the white line. But Dale Jr. is 8.7 seconds back. Next week Talladega Super Speedway. Noon Eastern time on Fox for the Sprint Cup race. What they call that boys the Lotto 500. The lottery. Yes. The lottery 500. <laughs> You look at the last couple of finishes that we've had at that place. Boy, I'm telling you, it doesn't uh, didn't get more exciting than that. How about David Ruderman searching his first top 10 finish uh, since he was fifth at Daytona? Yeah, he's had a, he's had a pretty dismal time since that top five finish at Daytona. In fact, I think his last four races he's finished 20th or worse. Watching the lap times again just on Jeff Gordon. Looks to me like Gordon is being real conservative. Got the comfortable lead. Pretty sure Johnson's probably going to have to stop before the race ends. Looks to me like Gordon's just kind of on cruise control right now. ODW, oh, back to Mr. Rudeman, back to headed to Talladega. I can't wait for that paint oh, scheme. Oh, gosh. Week. A little tribute to those 2009 Crimson Tide. Oh, man. I, I don't, I, I, that's one race I'll be glad we get over with. <laughs> I've already got my die cast order. And I, <laughs> are you going to bring the hat? Yes, sir. I'm afraid of that. Well, wear it on trackside. Don't, I will. don't save it for Sunday. Okay? I will not. I'm not like Hammond. I never wear a hat on Sunday. <laughs> is that an Al is, it, is that some sort of Alabama rule or something? <laughs> Stewart trying to recapture sixth place from David Rudiman. Now they're about 10 seconds off the lead right now, with 28 laps to go. And behind them here comes Biffle trying to close in his car owner Jack Roush celebrates a birthday today as does legendary engine builder Robert Yates. Twenty seven to go Jeff Gordon holding a two point eight second lead on Jimmy Johnson Jeff Burton four point two seconds back. With 23 laps to go while running in seventh place looks like David Rudeman's engine grenaded and then as the oil got out of that engine and onto the headers fire erupted from beneath the double zero like John force for him look at that turbulence behind that car though. And what a great run he was having running in the sixth seventh position uh, Steve Burns I think it's going to be busy pit road. Larry Mack, big break for Jimmy Johnson. He was going to be nine laps short of making it to the end. Now, Jeff Gordon has just said the grip has gone away. I don't know why, and I'm a little tight in the middle. Jimmy Johnson, meanwhile, said that the car is not as consistent as it's been when I get on the throttle. Let's go to Dick. Denny Hamlin, a two-tire change. He's gone already. And Burton gambled again. He may get out first. Jeff Gordon had a bad stop. Another left side problem. Matt. And the stop already completed for both Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Tony Stewart. Right side tire. Jeff Burton picked up three spots. They've gambled again, and we'll see how it pays off. And look at there. The Hendrick cars, for the most part, go with four tires. The 48 of Johnson, the 24 of Jeff Gordon. Tony Stewart picks up four spots. Kyle Busch gains six positions with a two-tire stop. Not sure what happened in a 24 pit, but something did. Jimmy Johnson stop down away. Oh boy. <laughs> did they get jacked up or what? Yes, they did. But, but like they pointed out, like Steve pointed out, a great break for that 48 car because it looked like they were not going to be able to make it to the end on fuel. 
This is the 19th Sprint Cup race at Texas. It's the 11th one that has seen a caution after the 300 lap mark. Daryl, now I know that, that we've been all over the place with strategy at the end of these races, but that's just one caution where we're going to go back racing with about 20 to go. I think the 24 car had to do four. You, you can't give a race away because you went with two, but I definitely do not disagree with the decision on these cars at the front of going with two tires. Maybe their only hope of beating that 24 car. I've been, I just want somebody to do something different. Gamble, play cards, do something. Quit doing what everybody else does. Jeff Burton has been caught with penalties, including today, and he has rebounded. Back at caution flag number four, lap 113. Watch the 31 behind Dale Jr. Uh, looks like he's going to stay out, so Jeff Gordon dives for the pit lane. That means Burton can't get in, and when you hit that cone, you're going for a solo trip down pit road at pace car speed and pay the price, and Burton did just that. Here's another look at it. Gordon kind of boxes him out from changing his mind. And the penalty meant that Burton went to the tail end of the field for the restart at lap 116. I'm not so sure that Burton just didn't out trick himself, you know, faking it and then deciding to try to get Je do something to Jeff Gordon and end up biting him. He lost uh, 25 or more positions from where he was at that moment. Fox NASCAR next Sunday at Talladega. Fox Saturday Baseball coming at you this weekend. Time off to a great start on Fox Yankees Angels Mariners White Sox 4 p.m. Eastern 1 p.m. Pacific Saturday. In the last 14 races Jeff Burton's led only one lap here prior to today and that was the winning lap in April of 2007. And the leader of the most laps is only won two out of the last seven. Today that would be Jeff Gordon. So. Burton went and dropped 30 spots from that penalty and Chris he's made them all back up. Yeah Mike it's been a recovery Monday for guys like Jeff Burton and even uh, Denny Hamlin when you think about the surgery with Jeff Hamlin of the Hollywood Hotel getting ready for the uh, finish and the unpredictability that we've had. We were watching closely Jeff Gordon's last pit stop and as they were just talking he's led the most laps 124 today doesn't mean you're going to end up winning the race. Well, no it doesn't mean you will wind up winning the race but again they've been kind of up and down all day long they've been having problems on the exchange in the right rear slow stops they've been fast enough all day to overcome it but now this getting down to crunch time whether now or not this last change is going to affect Jeff mentally. I think he's on a mission. I think Daryl and all the guys up in the booth have kind of pointed it out. We are seeing a different Jeff Gordon. He's very aggressive. He's not going to take any prisoners today. So it'll be interesting when they drop the green flag. What's going to happen? Well, we've seen a different Jeff Burton, too. Uh, both Jeffs are very aggressive, but uh, lucky and good for the 48 team. You heard about the fuel and how they might have come up short. They get the caution. Where is their position in terms of pulling this out? Currently seventh here. Well, the thing is, when you look at the 48 car, you know what kind of a closer he is. Somehow or another, he digs deep. Every time he gets close to the end of a race, he figures out a way to get to the front and be a contender. Today, he's got himself in the right position because he's got four tires, and he's in front of the guy, or at least start beside the guy that he's had to beat all day long, his teammate Jeff Gordon. All right, let's rejoin Daryl, Larry, and Mike. I just love the wave around because if this was a year ago, we would be talking about where the leader's restarting in the middle of the field. But these guys, there's, they would have been on the tail end of the lead lap last year. They would have just been in the way. Now they're on the tail end of the lead lap at the rear of the field. 15 cars take the wave around so just, that the, uh, the leader can line up right behind the pace car. And it looks like Burton has elected the inside. Tony Stewart will be on the outside for the restart. And the closer we get to the end of the race, the, the less gamble doing the wave around is because you know you may get a caution. You'll get a chance to get back on the lead lap, get in there and get fresh tires if that caution comes back out. Yeah, you just clean up the front of the field to where the guys that are racing each other are racing each other. Nobody mixed in the middle of them. So we'll now have 21 cars on the lead lap, another seven cars, one lap down, and four cars, two laps back. So on the front row, Burton and Stewart 
Hamlin and Earnhardt, Biffle and Kyle Busch, Jimmy Johnson with Jeff Gordon at row four, Edwards and Kenseth in row five. Which line do you like, Larry? You like inside? You like outside? I believe I like the outside line now because I think we've got some grip on the top side of the racetrack. Let's get that thing wound up. 18, 18 to go. go. Boy, look at Dale Earnhardt Jr. Three wide through one and two. He, the hole wasn't big enough for him. He had to lift, and maybe so did Tony, because here comes the inside, and it's the Gibbs Toyotas. Hamlin and Bush to the inside. Jr. regains his momentum. He may be able to hold on to third here. I think the 24 is going to get boxed right here as they try to go three Four wide. wide. Four wide. Four wide. Stewart Slater. Oh, Gordon's no. right into the wall. There's no. Edwards Allmendinger. Oh no, what but Gordon and Stewart and then cars trying to sweep by on the outside. Menard, Montoya, McMurray, Harvick, or rather Boyer, That's all get caught up in it. What a wadded up mess. The big one in Texas takes the pole sitter and the driver who's led the most laps, Gordon. And look who's left. I think you'll see uh, somebody gets into Tony Stewart. I'm not kidding. Well, they were. Can't yep. remember. Let's see. He's on the Stewart's outside. Stewart's the 14. We're and gonna, here comes Biffle on the yeah, bottom. Yeah, we're going to go three wide. We're going to try to go three wide right here. You see, uh, Gordon forces his way by right there. Oh, oh then Edwards. Edwards got into the back of uh, Stewart and got him into Gordon in there's the 24 car. Almendinger, there's McMurray. And there they all go. Bernard, I mean, Boyer. Bernard, Boyer. Logano. Boy, look at Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman, a great job. Oh, by. Scott Speed. Just snuck through there. That's called bobbing and weaving. You see here, it gets this so bottled up. Not a lot of room to work. Trying to go three wide right here. Here comes Carl with the run up on the outside, calling the 99 Edwards. I think Gordon did Gordon touch a little, just yeah, a little did, bit. But touch there. But then when he does, Edwards no. has got a hit into the back of the 14 to Tony Stewart. I don't think Gordon got into Stewart enough to move him. It, the contact from it, Edwards, though, I think did. what happened was well, Stewart broke a little momentum. Edwards yep. had it in the 99, had that great run coming off four, and they got together. Oh, I agree. That's why Edwards got into Stewart. Gordon and Stewart getting together breaks the momentum right there. You see the green car Edwards back there. He's, he's trying to find a place to go. <laughs> that was a hard lick on that 24 car. It really was. And now watch them all sweep up through the quad oval and crunch the outside. Menard and Boyer. Harvick got through. And Scott Speed, here he comes, right the here. silver car. Whoop, whoop. Incredible job. Jeff Gordon led 124 laps today. He won't be there to lead the last one. And he's asking Tony, what the heck are you doing? What happened? And Tony's saying, calm down, calm down. Look at the replay. So disappointing. I know Jeff Gordon was just, I, I, I've never seen him drive so yeah. hard. I don't think Jeff's there saying, it didn't mean to get into you. Tony's right. saying, it's okay. That isn't what did it. That might have started it, but it, it didn't cause the big one. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it earlier. It, it narrows up so much on the exit of turn four into the trial. Well, it's hard to run two cars side by side. And you see Carl Edwards in the 99, the green car back there. He's got a hole here up on the outside coming up on the back of Stewart. But when the 24 Gordon bumps the 14, the 14 goes up the hill right in front of Edwards. They come together there, 24 Gordon and 14. And you see how it cocks the 14 a little bit sideways? Yeah. That's why Edwards got into him. So there really is nowhere to pin blame. No, I can close racing contact loss of momentum big crash and it's all on the line this is what racing is all about folks this is when you give it all you got take no prisoners sometimes it doesn't work out so well wow newman cut hard left and missed both edwards and almond that 82 is the wow. one that amazed me scott speed in the 82 car just absolutely here in real Whew. time you see it happening we're showing you all these replays as the red flag is out Hard hit on Montoya. Watch the 82, the silver car there, almost gets into Gordon. Able to walk, work his way through there. Let's ride with Montoya. Uh, get to the bottom. Watch him here. Get to the bottom, get to the bottom, get to the bottom. No, 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 no. Ooh, easy, easy. No. Yeah, hold on. Got in that wet grass, and when he did, 
took off. How about Ryan Newman? Where do you see this crank at left and hang on? Go high, go high, go high, go high, go high. Go low now, real low. Where did everybody job, go? Man. Come on. Come on. Casey yeah, Kane. Up here a little bit. Get this in front of you. Get low, get low. Stay high, stay high, stay high. Keep coming. Get, get through there. Get through wow. there. You're good. Get low. You're good. Man, missed that 42 there. Nice job by he and Harvick. Actually, a very good job on those spotters yeah. park to help those guys get through there when there was mud on the windshield, smoke. You can see very coming little. Down, coming down. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. No in it. But you know, you mentioned that, Daryl. I know that was an in-car camera shot from Ryan Newman, the 39. But his windshield was getting the same mud thrown on. Oh yeah. Be a good time to get back in that hole and stay. Digger can't even see. You know it's bad. 17 laps to go. The race has been red flagged. They are still cleaning up down in turn number one. The preliminary report we have is that all the drivers involved are OK and either walked to the ambulance under their own power or drove their cars back to pit road as uh, Joey Logano did. His cars messed up, but they're going to work on it once the red flag is lifted. There are the drivers involved. And it took out a lot of the leaders. Well, I'm going to tell you what, this was definitely a game changer right here because when I look at our top five cars, Burton, Hamlin, Earnhardt, Kyle Busch, and Biffle, we're going to have roughly probably 15, 14, 15 laps to go. They're sitting there on two right side tires. And then Jimmy Johnson, who had some damage, got that caution. He's sitting back there on four tires and six. You saw the 20 car sitting on pit road. Again, the rules under red flag. If you plan on repairing your car, you cannot work on it until the yellow flag is displayed and the red flag goes away. And you're talking about our top five. Look at Burton. Here's a guy that got a penalty, had to restart 30 or something. He's leading the race. Hamlin, cat recovering from knee surgery. Got Dale Jr. up there, it's running pretty good today. And Kyle Busch was somebody who was going to go to the garage and work on his car about halfway through this race. So, and it's just amazing that uh, some of these guys have been able to hang in here and now they're sitting in the top five. Chris Myers, it's been quite a day so far. All right, 17 laps to go, the red flag. Uh, here's how we got here. Ran out on Sunday, started the race with your pole sitter, Tony Stewart, but the 48 leads on lap 48. Jimmy Johnson and then on lap 76 the crowd up and hollering more than 90,000 as Dale Earnhardt Jr. took the lead from Jimmy Johnson 11 leaders and 28 lead changes in this race and Pitt Road an adventure and figuring in a lot of the results as Tony Stewart came back out in first and here the commitment guys Jeff Hammond have problems with commitments anyway the commitment cone costing Jeff Burton yeah Jeff Burton decided to pit late when he couldn't get into pit road he hit the commit line, commitment cone and that's a penalty as far as NASCAR is concerned he had to do a pass through he had to go away to the back of the pack lost 30 spots worked his way back up meanwhile Jeff Gordon battling teammate Jimmy Johnson and uh, no love lost there. It actually caused some damage that forced Johnson to pit. He worked his way back up. And then moments ago, as you saw from Tony Stewart, Carl Edwards into Tony, into Jeff Gordon, nine cars in all, and an all-star crash lineup, looking like an early glimpse of Talladega, where we're going to be next Sunday on Fox. But everybody okay physically? Gordon and Stewart discussing what the heck happened with the 28 lead changes and seven cautions coming out of the race. So again, Jeff Gordon leading 124 laps, but we are under the red flag with 17 to go. And Chris DeVote is with the crew chief, Steve Letard of Jeff Gordon. That's right, Chris. Steve Letard in the garage. And I know this is a product of what happens towards the end of races, but you guys had such a good car. What happened? And can you even put your aggravation or frustration into words right now? Oh, well, you know, the DuPont National Guard Chevrolet was a good car all day long. Uh, we didn't have a lot of practice, so it says a lot about our team. This is kind of an outside the box setup, something we want to try. I think it was working out. And I mean, that's just a product of 15 guys really wanting to win a race. I mean, that's what we all get paid to do. And, and they were trying to make it happen. You got to get them early. Once the track, you know, once you get strung out, there's not a lot you can do. but. They're trying to make it happen. Do you see uh, some extra fire in your driver right now? Oh, there's no doubt. I think I've seen it since Daytona. The whole t the whole crew, you know, the pickers struggle a little bit in the middle there, but they had some good stops towards the ends, and 
you know, I think uh, myself and Jeff and everybody, we want to win. So that's what we were trying to do is win races. I think four tires are going to win the race and just didn't work out. And I think that's evident. We saw some uh, some issues or contact with the 48. As race fans, we love to see that. We love to see that fire and desire. What happened there? I, I don't really know. It looks like they got together off from four, but I'm just proud of Hendrick Motorsports. I mean, the 24, 48, the 88's really fast up there. So that's all we need to do. It's only race eight. Thank, thanks, Steve. Tony Stewart out of the care center uh, is released. Dick Bergeron's with him. Well, you had an awfully good car, Tony. Want to take a look at the replay and tell us what it was like inside your car? I saw it. I mean, I, I came off of four there and bounced off of Jeff's right rear, and then it just pendulum, and I lost it and got into his right rear, and then I got us to where neither one of us could get away from it. And uh, Somebody put me in three wide and one and two, and that, that got me up where I get, got a bunch of crap on my tires, and uh, that started it. You had a long talk with Jeff Gordon. What was it about? <laughs> How we got to there. <laughs> I mean, it, uh, I, you know, he was, I think he was upset or worried that I was going to be upset about it on his side, and uh, it wasn't his fault. I mean, obviously, and, and I got a chance to see it in the infield care center. It's definitely my fault. So I uh, apologize to all the, the teams and um, drivers that we got caught up at and their fans for it. So uh, it's, we had a really good car there, and uh, just, you know, shame that it happened, let alone to some of your teammates like that. Great start, almost a win. What a disappointment. We'll see you next week, Tony. Krista. Well, Tony, talking about how he saw the replay there, Carl Edwards just taking a look as well at our monitor. Carl, what is your take on everything? Oh, man, everybody was doing such a good job racing so close, and um, Tony was on two tires. Jeff was on four, and Jeff kind of got him, Tony up in the third lane, and I was going to follow Jeff uh, down through the, uh, the middle. And I, there just wasn't enough time. Uh, Tony started down just a little right there, and that's all it took. So um, just really hard racing. It's too bad there's too many cars, uh, that many cars torn up. But um, our Scott's Fusion was pretty good today. Man, but, man, just uh, not the way we want to end it here. Thanks, Carl. And Jeff Gordon has come out of the care center. Your crew chief indicated it was just 15 guys trying to win the race. Is that your version as well? Definitely. You know, when uh, you get uh, a late caution like that, you're going to have guys take two and guys take four. And we chose to take four. And, you know, every every second, every position counts on those restarts with that few laps to go. And uh, I saw Tony backing up and then he got loose. And, you know, I, I was trying not to get into him. And I ended up getting underneath him and we were three wide. And then I saw the 48 out of my left corner, you know, sneak in there as well. And uh, I just saw a lot of guys racing hard, and uh, we ran out of room. I, you know, I got clipped in the right rear and turned me in the wall. I'm just glad I'm okay. Um, man, what a race car. Gosh, what a race car we had. And, you know, that's what I'm bummed out the most about right now is that uh, we, we just had such an awesome race car. And uh, I want to thank DuPont. I want to thank uh, National Guard and, and uh, Special Forces. It was uh, really cool. And all these fans are coming out, man. They're seeing the heck of a show. Speaking of the 48, Jimmy Johnson, what happened when you two got together earlier in the race? I don't know. You know, he was real loose. And, um, you know, I got, I got to him, and he got real loose. I got uh, underneath him, and, you know, he raced me hard. And then I got – I slid up in front of him a little bit, and maybe that was it. And he ran in the back of me, you know, for no reason. And then, uh, then later – uh, he got out ahead of me after a pit stop or on a restart, and um, you know I was—he was just too loose. He wasn't fast enough, and my car was just so good. You know I could just get right on his bumper, and he got loose. And I guess he thought I, I you know, was being too aggressive. I don't know. And he just drove into my door, and uh, ended up costing him. You know, but uh, you know when when you've got a race car like that, you don't have uh, teammates and friends out there. You got to go out there and race hard and. And, uh, you know, that's uh, that's what Jimmy's had. And I'm just excited that we've got something to race with all these guys out here right now. You sound like you're angry with him, are you? Uh, I'm disappointed, you know, but uh, I'll get over it. And so he will talk about it. I mean, we're we're good enough friends, good enough teammates, you know, that uh, it's more just the competitors in us, you know, coming out out there and the aggressiveness of wanting to win, not not anything against one another. Indeed, you had a great run today. We saw Clint Boyer and Jamie McMurray also released from the care center. The drivers are required to go there after a crash when they cannot drive their car back to the garage area. Jeff Gordon was in it to win it. That was likely the best car here. Montoya's car all torn up as well. And the question becomes Jeff Burton, Denny Hamlin, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Kyle Busch, um, Greg Biffle, Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth. Who wins it? I don't know, but one thing I'm excited, I don't know excited is the right word, but one thing I appreciate is teammates 
putting the gloves on and going at each other. You know, we hear about team orders and, you know, who's got the best car and who's, who's got the best this and that. I just thought today that we saw Jeff Gordon. That's old Jeff Gordon yes, I knew about is. 10 years ago. Uh, he was on it today. And Jimmy Johnson, I'm not sure if he knew what to do with Jeff Gordon today. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you talk about Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car. You know, it was not that many laps ago. It was doom and gloom. They were on pit road with a cut left front tire. They didn't have enough fuel to go to the end. They were going to have to make another pit stop. They get a caution. Yeah, he's sitting back in the sixth position right now, but he's the first car with four fresh tires <laughs> with about 15 laps to go. And honestly, when I look at the cars in the top five that have two tires, a car that has impressed me all day long with a driver that's maybe not completely 100% is that 11 car of Denny Hamlin. He's looked awfully good here, especially in the late stages of the race. I like Burton. I just said, you know, I said early on in the race, watch these guys, you know, Burton and Kenseth and Mark Martin particularly. Those are the more veteran drivers that kind of have a tendency to figure out how to run these 500 mile races and here Burton sits with a shot. Well, of the five drivers who are at the front of the field, I'd hate to have to figure out which one is the hungriest for a victory. Maybe Steve Burns can help. Well, let's ask Todd Barrier, the crew chief on the 31. Uh, DW seems to think Jeff's the one to beat right now. How about his crew chief? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the car's been really good all day. You know, we've came back from a entering pit road violation, commitment line violation, and, um, you know, we've we've had um, two tires on a couple times. The car's really good on two. We got a several on behind us on two. Actually, the last long run we made, we were on two, so I feel like we're sitting in good shape. We put it in a position where we need to be here at the end, so we'll just see what happens these last 14, 15 laps. Todd, when they pull the red flag back and it's back to yellow, will you come to pit road? No, absolutely not. We made our bed. We're going to lay in it from here on out. Hope it's comfortable, bed. I hope so, too. Thanks, Steve. Uh, let's go to Krista, who is caught up with Clint Boyer as we're still under the red flag, waiting to restart here in Texas. Yeah, Mike, back here in the garage, Clint Boyer talking things over with crew chief Shane Wilson. I know uh, your car's not pretty back here. Is that just a product of tight racing? Is anyone to blame? What happened? We're supposed to have the big one next week, right? Um, you know, it's just too bad for the Cheerios, uh, Hamburger Helper Chevrolet. We had a fast race car early, got behind, got two laps down there, had a flat tire on the restart. I had no idea that it was flat. I hit the gas and spun. I was like, oh, no. And, uh, you know, dug ourselves out of a hole. It was just getting back on the lead lap to where we was going to be able to do something and, you know, salvage a decent day. And unfortunately, she's wrecked. Thanks. A lot of cars in the garage. One, Logano's, was on, uh, on pit road. And that may, too, be in the garage right now. As Boyer said, I thought this would happen at Talladega. It seems like a lot of exciting moments in our sport happen where we're going next week. Oh, my gosh. gosh. Unbelievable. That wow. looks like Bobby Allison did here in 1987. Oh, we have a problem. Bobby Allison with a horrible crash. Oh, no! He it! No! No! Unbelievable. Carl Edwards' car destroys. It's real simple how you explain this race back. It's amazing. Noon Eastern Time, Talladega Super Speedway. That's I all you need to say. We're going to Talladega. You, that's one of those races we absolutely won't have a clue who's going to win that thing uh, when they come and take the white flag, probably not to a few yards before the start-finish line. Steve? With Chad Knauss. And, uh, Chad, you guys battled back from the flat tire. Uh, your thoughts on the end of this race and your opportunity to win? Wow, who knows? Uh, Greg Ives and I were just talking about it. You know, it's going to be probably about 15 laps to go when we finally do take the green, and uh, it's going to be exciting for sure. You know, I think that we're still trying to learn exactly what goes on with these cars with a spoiler on them. I think side drafting can, can really impact what, what happens to the guy on the inside. So it's going to be interesting, but I'm real proud of the guys on the Lowe's team and the Lowe's Chevrolet today. We've run top five all day long, and the car's been good. At some points, we were the fastest car. At other points, you know, we were third, fifth place car. So, you know, I think we can get back into the top five and, and go home pleased with that. You had a spirited battle with that 24 car, and uh, Jeff said he came out of the care center that he was disappointed in Jimmy, but he said at this point it's just two guys racing against each other. Oh, they're just racing hard. That's you know that's that's the way that it is. You know he they got they got pretty close to one another through three and four, and that got Jimmy knocked up the track a little bit, and you know and they they got together coming down off through the tri through the trioval. But that's that's what happens, man. You want you want a couple of stallions out there. You know you want some guys that just hold mares. You know you want guys that want to go out there and get after, and that's what Jeff and Jimmy do. They race their hardest every single lap, and that's why that's why they're both champions, and that's why they are where they are in points. Thank you, Chad. Yep. Good luck. Let's go to Dick. Uh, with Mike Ford, Denny Hamlin's crew chief. Now, your guys in second spot with just a few laps left to go. And this morning, you and I had a conversation about how you wanted him to run the race.
race a little more conservatively. Is that out the window now? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the first part of this race was a little conservative. There were questions about, uh, you know, tires here today. So, you know, we're a little conservative. Denny did a good job driving to the front. We've had excellent pit stops. So uh, our FedEx Ground Toyota is in position to win a race. Uh, starting on the outside and seeing what happened the last time, a little bit curious what happened to the 14 there. He didn't get going. I'm hoping that wasn't because he was on the outside. But, uh, you know, it's, it's set up to be a good finish here. And, I'm sure it'll be exciting with the Gibbs cars on the outside and you got the 31 inside. He's been really good on the short run. So uh, looking, stacking up to be a good finish. I don't know if we've seen the end of it yet. Indeed it is. Hammer down for the 11 car. Matt. And that outside lane does have a Gibbs flavor. And when you look at the landscape, it's completely changed. Judging from Kyle's comments and where you are at this point with your package, prognosticate the final run to the finish here. Oh, this can be tough. You know, this interstate battery started a camera was fast on Friday, but uh, you know, we've just been fighting a loose race car all day, and Kyle's done a great job of, uh, of keeping focus, and we've been working on it. We took two tires there, got the track position, avoid the big wreck. Um, you got Kyle Busch driving. He can see the front. We got a shot, but uh, he's definitely got a loose race car to work with. All right, this team really has done yeoman's work getting this car into contention after struggling in the middle portions. Chris? Thanks to Kyle Busch, uh, trying to win his first race this year. Hasn't won since uh, last October with Jeff Hammond. Chris Myers here in the Hollywood Hotel awaiting the red flag. I thought Chad Canal was talking about the side drafting, the spoiler, which hasn't been much of a factor yet. Could be here over these last 15, 17 laps. Well, I think the other thing, when he talks about the side draft, I think he's worried a little bit about this restart and the way you're going to line up. And I think Jimmy's going to wind up running, run, lining up on about low, row three on the inside, the way I've got it figured. But we'll have to wait and see. But that restart, we've seen it so many times here, latter part of a race, is so crucial, critical to making sure you can get to the lead and win this thing. And I and think Jimmy, once again, Chad is smiling all the way to the bank because his car's got four tires. Nobody else has got We've them. talked about exciting finishes here, what crew chiefs. Uh, are doing. Uh, we, are they worried about what Chad Canals is doing given the order here once we restart? It's Just, too late. Uh, it's, it's too, too late. late. I mean, I think Todd Berry summed it up. He's already made his bet. He's got a lie in it. So the big thing is they have got to figure out how to deal with, with the fact that the 48 car does have four tires. And I said he's the only one out there with it. He's not the only one, but he's in the best position with the four tires closest to the front. They've cranked the engines. Uh, so we have 17 laps or more, up to three attempts at a green white checker to finish this thing. Uh, involved in that nine car wreck, Jamie McMurray, the Daytona 500 winner and Chris Devota is with him. Yes, Chris, down here in the garage and Jamie McMurray, another driver having to leave Texas with a wrecked race car. What was your take on what happened? Is anyone to blame in this? I don't know. I, I saw a replay and it's, it's really hard to tell. You know, it uh, looked like a couple of guys got three wide and um, there's just, just not enough room in the trial for that. So it, uh, it was very unfortunate for Juan and I. We both, uh, both had really good cars again and it just seems like we have a hard time getting to the finish, um, even though we do have good cars. So, um, it's uh, it's unfortunate, but we had a really good Bass Pro Shop Chevy, so we'll uh, we'll move on. You just have days like this, you know. Right, thanks, Jamie. Yeah, both Earnhardt Ganassi cars back here, Mike. Thanks, Krista. They have refired the cars. The pace car has pulled away to turn number one with what's left of the field. We had 21 cars on the lead lap at the time of the crash. Seven of them were involved in the accident. So that leaves us 14 plus any wave around cars uh, to slug it out. Because the first car one lap down was in the wreck, there will be no free pass on this caution. And uh, let's update you. We were incorrect last week. The free pass continues through every restart all the way to the checkered flag. Uh, they don't wave it off with 10 laps to go. Every restart will have a free pass car unless that car is ineligible. I had to chuckle a little bit at Chad Canal. So how eloquently he put you want a couple of thoroughbreds out there. You don't want a couple of old mares. So <laughs> right. I think that's what they have today or had today was two thoroughbreds. 19 minutes and 13 seconds of red flag for the crash in turn number one that took this race's dominant car Jeff Gordon and its pole sitter Tony Stewart out of the race between them. They led 198 of the 318 laps today. Our aerial coverage today is brought to you by Direct TV. Don't ask about my bracket, but to track the progress of your Direct TV head to head bracket, log on to directtv.com slash NASCAR. Uh, after that crash, my bracket has not broken. It is blown up. 
Well, we still got the 18 and the 88 here to go at each other. We settle that one. Well, guys, we've got a few of those lead lap cars coming. Greg Biffle is 16. Krista gave up a top five position there to come to pit road. Yeah, they knew there was just too many laps for them to be able to hold everyone off. Remember, they had taken two tires. Greg Irwin said, let's see what the, everyone else does. But they made the call to come down to pit road, get a little bit of fuel there. There you see Greg Biffle taking back off. That's different. Two left side tires. Well, we saw that on the 24 car earlier. They did right sides, got another caution, came back and got left sides. So now they feel like they have four fresh tires on that 16 car. Now everyone was on pit road seven laps ago, but consider also that when that wreck happens in turn one, a lot of cars have to go through that debris field. And uh, if you have any questions as to whether you ran over something, Good time to come in. Yeah, that might have been some of the thinking as well, Mike. Some of these guys that were right around that wreck come down just to be safe. Yeah, when you think about Jimmy Johnson, Chad Knauss, the 48 car, realistically, they only have about a lap and a half on those tires because we just barely got up to speed one lap before they had the big wreck here on right. the front stretch. 15 cars on the lead lap. Jeff Burton trying to join Carl Edwards as a three time winner here. Nobody else has won more than once. Burton gets around this joint, Larry. Pretty darn good. Always has. He yeah, and this, Matt Kent has had a heck of a battle here about two years ago. Yeah, this is just one racetrack that we go to where there's no one team or organization has dominated it, especially over the last three, four, five years. A lot of the lap down cars pitting. As we get ready to settle this one with 14 laps to go. I believe we uh, we may set a record for the fewest lead changes in Texas. We've only had four leaders and four lead changes in this race. That's not correct. We'll uh, we'll update you further. You got some guys up there though, Mike, in the top ten that need a win. Hadn't had one for quite a while. This fellow right here is one of them. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88 car. And he's setting in a he's in that the inside line. It's going to be interesting to see which one is going to have the advantage as they go to turn one. And let's update. We've had more than a dozen leaders today. Jeff Gordon, 124 laps. Tony Stewart, 73 laps. Of the cars left in contention, Dale Jr.'s led 46. Jimmy Johnson, 39. Greg Biffle, 14. And Jeff Burton has been out in front for eight laps today. And that man right there, Kyle Busch, that we were just looking at, he's not been to victory lane since Bristol in August, dominated the race here in the fall, had to pin with about three or four laps to go for fuel, handed the lead to his brother, Kurt. And I want to, I want you to watch him. Keep an eye on him, that fellow right there on the restart, because when it comes to getting three wide, high wide and handsome, he'll do it in a heartbeat. Now, Mike, you talked about running through debris. Chris Devota just told us that the 16 car did have a flat left side tire. The reason they came to pit road. Yeah, so that didn't, make, break for them. didn't make a lot of sense for me to come down and put two left side tires on unless you did have a problem. So that answers that. A lot of drivers were going to have a great day today. One of them was the 19 year old from Middletown, Connecticut, Joey Logano, last year's rookie of the year. They've got enough sheet metal on that car that he can go out right around for the last 13 laps. A.J. Allmendinger will start at the back for pitting before pit road was open. So here's how they line up. Among the lead lap cars there are now we're showing 14 on the lead lap Burton and Earn Hamlin. Earnhardt and Bush that's Kyle Bush. Jimmy Johnson in the third row for this restart with Matt Kenseth. Kurt Bush with Casey Kane. Greg Biffle with Kevin Harvick. That's your top 10. Then it's Newman, Mark Martin, Truex, and Almendinger. Those are your lead lap cars. How confident are you that we will uh, get to the checkered flag without another car? Based on 2010, not very confident. But I, I want to go back and just make a note about this 17 car. If you go all the way back to the second caution we had, Todd Parrott and his group pitted three times. They were back in 30th position. They went a lap down. They short pitted. And here he is running well inside the top 10. How confident am I? Changing my reservation to a later <laughs> flight as we speak. As we get ready to go green, it'll be 12 laps to go. Green flag. Dead heat so far as we head to turn one. Junior looks low, way low on Burton. No room. 
That outside looks like it could get the push off of turn two. Hamlin's there. Burton fighting back. It'll be a drag race down the back straightaway. Who will drive at the deepest going into turn three? We're going to go in there three wide again. Watch Kyle Busch. He's got a really good run as he comes off of turn four. He laid off those guys. Going to get ahead of steam. See if he can do anything. Burton Hamlin at the line. Hamlin by inches. I think Hamlin got the best run off turn four, but here comes Kyle Busch. That 18 car now. Three wide through one and two. Burton and there had to goes slam the, the door. Up it slid. Here comes Kyle. And here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88 car. He's going to go by Burton in the 31. We're going to find out about side draft right here. Owen Jr. got loose. And it upset the 31 car of Jeff Burton. That allows the 11 of Hamlin, the 18 of Kyle Busch, to pull away. Now we have two new teammates battling for the lead. Ten laps to go. And Jimmy Johnson, with those four tires, is looking for some daylight. Whoa, he got up in the wall there. He just scraped the wall off, too. I think he was getting greedy that time through those four tires. He's going to slide back. Pushed a little too hard, but he's going to fight back on the high side as he gets into turn three. The Gibbs Toyotas, Denny Hamlin, driving hurt, coming off knee surgery, trying to hold off his teammate Kyle Busch, while Dale Jr. tries to pull the rest of the train back up to the leader. It doesn't surprise me about Hamlin. That car's been good all afternoon. Kyle Busch, on the other hand, I would have never thought we'd see him up here battling for a win or for the lead. I believe that 11 car, he's going to check out on these boys. What's the best medicine? Winning. Or looking out that windshield and seeing nothing in front of you but daylight. Eight to go this time. Matt Kenseth will have to pit, we're told. And Greg Biffle has trouble. And Jeff, I think Burton Jeff Burton has been in the wall. Yeah, he just hit the wall as well. He's in trouble. When you come down to the end of the race like this, you don't have the, gri the grip in the car, but you want to give it all you got. You're going to hit things. Seven laps to go this time. Look at Junior that is, cargo. Junior is inching up on the 18, but can he catch him? And I'm going to tell you what, Denny Hamlin, that 11 car, just ran the fastest lap that he's run in these 320-something laps two laps ago. Clean air out front. Jimmy Johnson still on the high side trying to catch Kurt Busch for fourth. And it's those, a good run off the corner. And those magic words, Mike, you're pulling away. Dick. Matt Kenseth suspected tire problems. They were going to pit, decided at the very last instant, stay out, Mike. You must have a flat tire. Yeah, yeah you, you can, can see, see the it. right rear is down. And right now, he's the last car on the lead lap, but he's going to have to come to pit road. Well, this battle just will not go away. Jimmy Johnson in that 48 gets a good run off the corner. But Kurt Busch wins the battle down the straightaway. Look at him go to the high side through three and four. Oh, easy, boys, easy. Busch gives him room. Got to give him a little room, and he does. That's very uh, gentlemanly of him. Johnson may get the spot, and they have caught Dale Jr. for third. Five to go. Johnson was on a tear. He was coming, but he got up into the fence a little bit off a of turn two a couple of laps ago, and it really broke his momentum. There's the separation. He's going As by Jimmy Jr. Johnson catches and passes Dale Earnhardt Jr. for third. Too little, too late for the 48. Yeah, because right now, Jimmy Johnson just ran a 29.71. Our leader, Denny Hamlin, 29.82. Four, Four to, go. to go. Jeff Burton restarted first. He's drifted back to 12. He'll get a lead lap finish out of this. As now Kurt Busch goes after Jr. You know what? I, I've said this. I said it last week at Phoenix. I'll say it again today. You find out what somebody's made of, what kind of character they got, what kind of effort they'll put out when they play hurt. And this cat, Jen, Denny Hamlin had surgery a week and a half ago on his left knee. Three to go. Toughed it out last week in Phoenix when everybody thought he should have vacated that car at the battery change. Just sent him a strong message. He sent a strong message to his team and to the competition. I don't roll over. Well, I won't tell you who will not roll over either. It might be too little too late. Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car outside of Kyle Busch in 18. Battle for second. They'll come to the line. Two to go. Whoa, Johnson Clear. is dirt tracking it off of turn four. There he's, got two laps. he's got two laps. I don't know. He just picked up a ton on that lap, 29.74 to 30.17. And that was passing a car. 
He's going to be on his bumper when they come to get the white flag. It was nine tenths of a second. Hamlin's lead with two to go. Johnson ate up four tenths the previous lap. See what he does. They'll be coming to the white flag this time. Closing. He's closing. It's going to be mighty, mighty close. One to go. One's driving offensively and one's driving defensively. Last week, Denny Hamlin had to be helped into his car. He's got to get half a lap more out of it. Man, Johnson he's closing coming. hard. He's Look at the coming. Run. He got off turn two. He'll go to the high side through three and four. He's going to be right on his bumper, but he isn't going to make it. Denny Hamlin off turn number four, playing hurt for Coach Joe Gibbs. Hamlin delivers on time. He wins in Texas. The 11 car goes to victory circle. Heard that before. He's won two out of the last three races, one right before surgery, one two Way weeks out. It is Denny Hamlin's 10th start in Texas, his first victory here. Good job, Mike. Congratulating his crew chief. He did not lead this race. Yourself. Everybody did a good job. The way you race right there, good job. He didn't lead this race until lap 323 of 334. But Mike, we finished the race in regulation. You could hear it in Denny Hamlin's voice. He is used up. And he becomes the 16th driver to win at Texas Motor Speedway and has now won two of the last three Sprint Cup races. I tell you, a couple of drivers that rebounded nicely. Casey Kane in that nine car finished fifth. How about Mark Martin? Got lapped earlier. Sixth place finish for that five. He did that last week at Phoenix, Mark. Finished fourth after running about 15th all day. Denny Hamlin lights him up. There's the coach. They'll all head for victory lane when we come back. Promotional considerations provided by... One week ago, Denny Hamlin gingerly lifted his left leg, guided it past the roll bar, and did the turn, swivel, and slide gently into the driver's seat. Today, we'll drive to victory lane. What I'm talking about, Texas, baby. What a resurgence, what a recovery, what a comeback. Matt Yoakum's in victory lane. And it seems appropriate the place where you get six shooters for scoring a huge win. What a big shootout. What type of message does that send everyone about the desire and motivation of you and this team? Well, we uh, we definitely don't give up. You know, we, you know, it sucks we always got to come from the back, and you know that's a, a lot of us driver. We always have to start in the back, but uh, you know I never doubt this race team and uh, Mike Ford just did a great job there at the end. I thank the whole 11 team, uh, everyone at FedEx and all the employees. Uh, it's a great win for them. Uh, and the fans, I've never seen so many fans on a Monday night for a Monday race like this before. So can't thank them enough. Got to thank Sprint, uh, Coca-Cola, Toyota, and everyone, JGR, Wally X. Uh, it's just a great day for our racing. You said at one point on the last restart you thought it was going to be a crash or you're going to win it. And then you kept saying on the cooldown lap, I just can't believe it. This is not the type of racetrack people characterize us being strong at. They, they always say we're a short track team. and. Uh, when, I knew, when we won Homestead last year, it was a sign of things to come. And, you know, I know we got some good race cars in our stable, and we're just going to keep better and keep getting better and keep working towards the chase, and hopefully by the time we get there, we'll peak. Your friend and spotter, Curtis Markham, said, you can go ahead and do the burnout, but be careful of the knee. How is the knee? I'm trying. I'm still. You I'm did trying, a nice burnout. I'm trying to get it straight right now. Um, I'm working on it. So by the time this interview is over, we'll, we'll have it straightened. And, uh, you know, like I said, you know, I, I did it for the long run. I did it for the chase. I did it for the championship in the long run. So even though I knew I was going to take some steps back um, and, you know, sacrifice a month or so that I knew once I came back, I was going to be stronger. Your cowboy hat, your six shooters and a very large, big Texas sized trophy awaits you.
Great day for Denny Hamlin. There he is getting out of the car at victory lane, favoring that knee just a bit that doesn't want to extend and, and stretch all the way. We tied a record for lead changes today with 29. It's the second win here for Joe Gibbs. Tony uh, Stewart scored for Gibbs here in November of 2006. A very competitive race. But wow, what a pileup that took so many great contenders out of the race. It really did, and that's a shame. But one thing that just jumps out at me so uh, obvious is when the when the coach of the Washington Redskins is inducted into the Texas Hall of Fame here at the Speedway, Joe Gibbs, uh, that tells you that you're off to a pretty good start this weekend. Plus, this is the team. There he is right there, Coach Gibbs. Uh, this is the team that most people say could win the championship this year. And, you know, you go back a couple of races ago at Martinsville, we all felt like that four tires at the end of that race for Denny Hamlin and Mike Ford was the wrong call. They still went the victory lane. Even though I felt like four tires was the way to go like Steve Letarte and Chad Canals did with their drivers, I did not feel like that two tires was the wrong call by no means because, again, track position seemed to be so critical. And and now Texas, 19 races, 16 different winners. Wow. And now it's on to Talladega. I think our questions about the rear spoiler have been answered. Great competition, uh, a surprise, and, and yet grateful winner. Chris, what more could you ask for? 19 days after surgery and Hamlin wins. And for those that have questions, uh, is a NASCAR driver an athlete? Uh, yes, uh, without question. And some are tougher than others. Denny Hamlin, a terrific performance today. Not a terrific performance. It was stupendous in my opinion. I mean, he showed so much heart, Chris. I mean, you don't understand. I mean, you've had knee problems. I've had knee problems. You can't imagine what it'd be like to be stuck inside that race car for 500 miles. All of a sudden, win a race. You see him right there. Huh. He, Checking it he, out. He's going to. I mean, he's, he's in pain. He's in pain he's right in now. A lot of pain, he, yeah. He's loving this win, but he's hurting. He is hurting big and, time. And one of his members said over the radio, winning with a one-legged driver and a half-brained crew chief, kind of having some fun with Mike Ford, they were able to pull it out. So he jumped seven positions to 11th in points now. All three of the Joe Gibbs drivers are in the chase at the moment. The top 12. Jimmy Johnson, as you see, Kenseth Biffle, Harvick Gordon rounding out the top five, has the largest points lead of the year uh, so far with 108 ahead of Kenseth. In fact, Jimmy Johnson battling to finish second as we round out those trying to get into the top 12. Uh, let's check in with uh, Jimmy Johnson. Steve Burns is standing by. Well, Jimmy Johnson, uh, great battle at the end of the race. You fought your way back from a flat tire. Tell us about that, the battle with Jeff Gordon. Pretty wild day. Yeah, I mean, all in all, it was a great day. We had that left front tire go down. Um, then we were fortunate to catch a caution when we did. And then there at the end, um, the car was just dragging the nose too bad for the first couple laps. Um, I think we sat too long, and the front tire pressures dropped. And I lost a few spots. I almost hit the wall down to one and two trying to work the top. And then once the uh, front tire pressures came in and the, the splitter got off the ground, I started coming, but it was like a lap too late. Jeff said that he was a little disappointed about the contact between the two of you, but that uh, he felt like you guys were just racing hard and teammates and would be able to talk through it. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I'm pretty disappointed in, in how he was racing me today. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of it and sort it out. Uh, there's no, no need to play it out in the press. And, uh, you know, we'll get it taken care of uh, at the shop and during the week and then come back to the next race and do it again. Thank you, Jimmy. You got it. Thank you. It was a fast and furious finish in Texas. Kyle Busch, one of the players in the mix. Two tires, four tires, was that the right call? And how would things have changed if that late caution wouldn't have come out? Uh, I, it was definitely the right call. You know, we probably had a 10th to 13th place car today, unfortunately. But uh, Dave and the guys never gave up. Uh, the pit crew on pit road was awesome today. I mean, they were just flawless. So they did a great job for us. And, uh, you know, the Interstate Batteries Camry was just that you know we just needed to work on it all day long we can never hit it and I, I think I know what it was and Dave knows what it was too so hopefully we can come back here in the fall with something a little different it just what we had worked with the, the wing but doesn't like the spoiler that much so we have some work to do on that but uh, can't thank the guys enough and um, you know third is a good day for us here today and uh, glad to see our teammate win hopefully he gets out gingerly a great day for Joe Gibbs racing well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. with an absolutely terrific run today. Maybe not the finish you wanted, but are you happy with the day? Yeah, we got a lot, of work, lot to work on still. Um, right there at the end, um, I just couldn't hold them off. Um, the new tires were, were coming, and I tried to pinch everybody down, and they just run you up into the fence off, of, off the corner, and I drove it in the fence once myself. So, um, We're getting better, but uh, we still got a lot to work on to get better. Hamp Energy and uh, National Guard, I appreciate their support. Um, we're, we're a good team. We can be a great team, and uh, we just got to keep working. Were you having fun out there leading this race today? I was having fun until all them cautions started coming at the end. Everybody wants to race. You know, we run 
450 miles to sit there and settle it in a bunch of mess at the end of the race, and it's kind of stupid, but that's the way it went down. So we'll see what happens next week. Nice run today. Congratulations, Junior. Thank you. All right, thanks, Dick. Junior, way to tell it like it is. Uh, Denny Hamlin, his 12 laps led were enough at the end. He's uh, fired up over his uh, 10th career Sprint Cup win. We like to have fun before we wrap things up. Our DirecTV head-to-head -head brackets, the matchups, hopefully you got in. And as we look, we call these turns instead of regions of the country here in these brackets, uh, Jeff Hammond. You see the head-to-head -head who advanced. A few surprises there with Kyle over Junior. I, I think track. that's what's got him so upset right now because he had Kyle beat most all day long. But right there at the end, Kyle took two tires and was able to get ahead of him right there and kind of upset that bracket. But uh, take a look at turn two here, Chris. Yeah, and with Mark Martin and Legato both advancing, now that leaves some drivers out. You see Truex Jr. as well, and Tony Stewart, and some people may have had him in there at fast as four at the end as we look ahead to turn three. Jimmy Johnson, you would expect. Montoya advancing as well, and Biffle, so that one at least uh, the least shaken up. Least shaken up, but I mean, that big wreck really took a lot of guys out, including if you take a look at Bobby Labonte advancing in front of Jeff That's Gordon, a bit of a surprise. Well, he led, what, 130-some, 40-some laps of this race. Scott Speed survived. Yep, he survives, and, uh, you know, you just never know what's going to happen, and I think that's what makes this whole thing kind of fun, but also unpredictable. And a fan can win money, a driver can win money for his charity. Go to 800-DIRECT-TV or go to direct to TV. Uh, dot com slash NASCAR for more information. So Denny Hamlin may be a guy who was uh, at least on the outside of the top 12, the points race or the chase for the championship coming in, uh, a guy who can challenge. We keep looking each week for someone who can challenge Jimmy Johnson for the championship, the Sprint Cup championship seriously. And Denny has his second win of the year, even with a bad knee. Even with a bad knee. I mean, it, it was impressive. I mean, to the point, like I'm going to say it again, he showed a lot of heart because Jimmy was coming. He had, you know, the two right side tires, Jimmy had a four tire, so he really showed what he was made out of, not only going through the pain of the knee, but man, when you look in the rearview mirror and see that 48 car coming, you've got to get up on the wheel. Uh, he is Mr. Monday. Remember, one in Martinsville after rain delay. Same here in Texas in front of a great crowd of some 90,000. Here's what's coming up on Fox throughout the afternoon, evening, depending upon where in the country you are watching. Our Saturday baseball, Yankees and Angels, a couple of teams familiar in the postseason, Mariners and White Sox teams trying to get back there. Note the start time on Saturday, 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. And then Sunday at 12 noon, at noon Eastern time, it'll be NASCAR on Fox from Talladega, Sweet Home Alabama for our own Larry McReynolds. And remember last year, we had 57 lead changes and 25 different leaders and the spectacular crash and finish with Brad Keselowski and Carl Edwards at a Talladega. Jeff Gordon again close but no cigar as he led the most laps today. He's won Talladega some six times. So we're headed to our ninth race of the season. Congratulations to Denny Hamlin and Joe Gibbs Racing for Daryl, Larry and Mike, for Steve, Krista, Dick and Matt. For Jeff Hammond and our entire production crew, we appreciate them staying over to work on Monday, and we appreciate you watching for NASCAR Monday. Fred Aldous, congratulations on your daughter's wedding. He works audio here for us. And thank you for being a part of NASCAR on Fox. We hope you join us Sunday, noon Eastern, from Talladega, Alabama.